Rhodium Radio, no sad podcast. Rhodium Radio, no sad podcast. In the city, city of Wilmington, we keep it rocking. So come on, shake, shake it for me, Kelly. Yeah, Dr. Dre is in full effect, and I gotta tell y'all a little something. Eze is down with us. MC Ring, you know he's down with us. DJ Yella is down with us. Arabian Prince, you know he's down with us. Tony A. The Wizard is down with us. JJ Fag is down with us. Timmy T, you know he's down with us. DJ Pooh Boy is down with us. Toddy B and Spade, they're down with us. My boy Ice Cube, you know he's down with us. I like to mention, so pay attention to where I'm from. Compton, but the tapes are from the rodeum. My name is Dre, listen while I play. And by the way, I'm also down with NWA. Yo, Steve at the rodeum is down with us. Slanging funky tapes, it is a must. We're number one. one, one, one. Tony A. Welcome everybody to Rodeo Radio episode 98 and I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in for the Slow Pain Tribute. Uh, once again, may his name live on forever. Um, you know, let's continue to keep his family in prayer. And I want to thank everybody who uh, liked and shared and commented, even those of you that commented negatively, which I, it's kind of impossible to believe that somebody would comment something negative on something like that. But you know what? You do you, we'll do us. Other than that, uh, let me go ahead and give a big shout out to my boy, OG Magoo, for blessing me with this active shirt. Uh, OG Magoo's a dope, dope artist. Uh, you guys can get with him on Instagram, OG Magoo on Instagram. And also want to give a shout out to my boy, Jen, from Fashion Town for blessing me with this Harbor Area hat. If you guys want to go get your Ben Davis, your Dickies, your Pendletons, you know, your white tees, your chonies, white socks, whatever. He's got a, a fashion town. Jen, what's up? Much love, much respect. So I don't have too many announcements, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. I'd like to welcome my very, very special guest, ODM from Lighter Shade of Brown. How you doing, my brother? Hey, what's up, Tony? Oh, man. Thanks you, for having me, bro. It's been well, some years, huh? Let me say this. <laughs> Finally, I've been, I, I have been wanting to sit down next to you for the longest time, brother. Appreciate that. Uh, I was sharing with you that earlier, the last time I was... I actually chopped it up with you. I want to say it was like either 97, 98, me and Mello was at, were at your house and we were playing you the record that we were producing and stuff. Right. From there, I think I might have seen you like from afar off on stage performing, mm -hmm. etc. Right. But um, other than that, man, um, I'm very thankful that you came. I know uh, you don't live too close. So, <laughs> but speaking of that, how was your drive coming over here? Drive was cool. We were smashing only because I knew you gave me a certain time to be here. So I told the homies, I was like, bro, we got to smash. We were waiting on one of the homies. You know how that go. <laughs> so we were speeding down. We went down to 91, hit that fast track. And then uh, we doing by 85. You know what I mean? We pulled out. We were here, man. But we made it on time. That's good, man. You know, I know today is Wednesday. Um, let's, if we could back up to the weekend. How was your weekend, man? This past weekend? What did we do this weekend? Football, Sunday, my Rams lost. <sighs> I know you're a Cowboys fan, Tony. Uh, Saturday, we uh, we did a photo shoot, actually, man. Okay. I got this line on um, that I collab with my boy Rick from Barely Broke Intellects. We collab uh, collab with Lighter Shade, and uh, we got this line coming out. Um, it's more of a traditional lowrider type vibe, button up, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, that's going to be popping. So we did a photo shoot for that on Saturday. And then uh, that's pretty much how it went, man. I mean, I don't, if I'm not really doing anything too active, I'm at the home with the family, bro. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you brought up the Rams. I, I see you're a, a faithful Ram fan. <laughs> that's good. Um, baseball, who's your team? I got a side. I don't watch too much of it, but growing up, um, partly in, you know, Orange County, man, I grew up an Angels fan. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And uh, a lot of a lot of people argue that because, oh, I see you here, there, Dodger fan. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, my wife, she's, she was a Dodger fan before, you know, I converted her over, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, but Angels for sure, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Angels. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, the Rally yeah. Monkey. Yeah. Yeah. little Rally Monkey would come out, you know what I'm saying? And, oh, man, it was, you know, OC boy from, yeah. from, from the start. And then that's what I grew up. My mom would take me. Yeah, I'm a Dodger fan. As you know, I'm a Cowboy fan. Do you have a college football team? 
I don't. I don't watch too much college football. Okay. Yeah. I love college football. People know that I'm a Notre Dame fan. I love Notre Dame. Mm. Um, what about basketball? Basketball, Lakers off top. I mean, we. I mean, we've had runs, bro. I mean, from the early days, you know, the All Star team. You know, we grew up in the right. '80s, bro. So, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson. You know, the All Star team, the Road G one. I mean, I just remember growing up, just watching them on the TV. Like, man, like how good we got it right now during yes. that run. Um, and of course, to the Kobe era, yeah. and uh, it's just you know, it's been a great run. Lakers have always been part of the you know the, the roster. Yeah, but, Lakers fan too. Yeah. Um, to me, the best years of basketball for me, Kobe and Shaq, especially playing Sacramento in the playoffs. Mm. Mike Bibby and those guys, awesome games. Yeah. Roddy Devok, the king of the flop. Yeah. You know, I, I did a song called uh, Welcome to L.A. Back in, two, well, it was a spinoff of Jermaine Dupri's, um, what was it? Was it Jermaine? Welcome, yeah. to, Atlanta. Welcome to Atlanta. Right? Okay, yeah. And I flipped it and it actually went like, well, it wasn't viral back then because it was nothing on the internet really, but... Um, I did a song, got some media news. It was like, welcome to L.A. where them Lakers play, where they be balling all fools like every day, Kobe, Shaq. It was dope, man. And um, that was my memory from there. And then we, we recorded the video. We did a whole thing to it. We went out to the parade, and we were out there. We just giving some out, slanging, giving some out, slanging. Uh -huh. But that was my memory during that. Uh, yeah, we need to bring that song back, especially this year. Uh, it's on YouTube, man. I mean, we're about to yeah. win it, so I don't care what people you know say. What I, mean? we're I win just it. got it up yesterday. They're like, you need to do a remix for that, man. Bring it back. I was like, eh, we'll see. <laughs> now, I know you're not too much into politics, and neither am I, but <laughs> there was there was something going on yesterday. We don't know what it was, but there was two <laughs> guys supposed to be debating. Did you watch it? I did watch it, man. Uh, I, I got to tell you, just right from the first topic, bro, like, I mean, they were just hitting it out. I mean, Trump, he's, he's a beast. Like, he goes hard. Like, he, he will not. I think that's his tactic, bro. Like, yes. he ain't going to let you talk. You know what I'm saying? He's just going to, you know, shut, you know, and just, he's that kid that just won't shut up. I know. I but know. I think it's, it's, it's a strong tactic that he has. I mean. Yeah. You know, and even Biden, I know he was trying to keep it cool, calm, and collective. Yeah. But this guy wasn't letting him, man. So, you know, there was a lot of people that I talked to this morning that was just disappointed with the whole thing mm. because I know a lot of uh, faithful Biden supporters. Right. And I know a lot of, uh, in the closet, Trump supporters. Sure, okay? sure, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And and they were both pretty much on the same page. Like, dude, after that shit show, like, I don't even know who to even vote for. Like, we got to vote one of these goofballs in. Yeah, um, I mean, the tweets were just, I mean, I was following the debate 20 tweet and it was just uh everybody was lost like this is america right now <laughs> like this is who's you know representing our country right I now know. these two clowns on there can you imagine how we look like to other countries that were probably tuned in nah exactly <laughs> they're sitting up there having you know laughing eating their popcorn man you know what those I mean? churros and them. I'm like what the fuck is that but we'll see well i'm interested to see uh, i want to see a kamala man get up there and uh Kamala Harris go up against that. Who's who she? Uh, Pence. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That should be an interesting one. Should be pretty good. Pay per view, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what it feels like. <laughs> Shit. Now, um, when you're at home chilling and you got time, because I know last time I called you, you were telling me you were cleaning the pool. And um, <laughs> when you have spare time, what do you like to watch on TV? Whether it's Netflix, whether it's regular TV, whether it's movies, Blu ray, DVDs, what do you like to watch? I'm going to be honest. And I. I, I I'm not gonna say I don't watch. I don't watch a lot of TV. My wife is usually the one that she has uh -huh. her, her uh, either the Netflix on. My son's downstairs. He they, they take over, you know, downstairs. Well, my son takes over downstairs, and my wife takes up upstairs. So downstairs we'll be down. We're watching, you know, uh, Pooba or watching Supersonic Hedgehog. We're watching like all the cartoons, right? Nickelodeon, Baby and Shark, and um, Baby Shark. <laughs> all of that. I mean, you name it. You know, anything a four year old would be going through, right? And then. Uh, my wife, she likes to watch the ID channel. I don't know why she's trying to get ideas or what. It's like all these lifetime stories, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like where they're killing people and like all these, like, I'm like, girl, what, would you try to set something up for somebody? Mm -hmm. Like, and she's like, no, I just like it. I just like the drama, you know, whatever. So I ended up watching what she's watching. She was heavy into like Walking Dead while that was going okay. on. So I would say like uh, the only... Uh, thing that I got into the only webisodes or what have you the season was Ozark okay Ozark was my shit dude and 
I don't know if it's coming back, but like uh, it's supposed to be. They're supposed to be filming another one. They put it on pause because of COVID. But Ozark was my shit. A lot of people have told me that. And I, I, you, you know what I was into, believe it or not, because I just love the whole '80s era. I loved Stranger Things. Okay, I never got a chance. To. Oh my god, I love. You know why? Because they show Radio Shack. They show the mall. They show like like uh, OP shorts. They show like Throwback. cassettes. Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. So it's like. I like those days better than today. I'm just sure. being real. I mean, technology's good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. We love it. We need it. But life was more simple and life was more fun. When we used to go play, we go play outside. Mm -hmm. And we better bring our asses home before the streetlights came out. Exactly. My son, I tell him the same thing. Like, Mijo's, he won't listen to anything else, I say. But he knows the streetlights. Like, right. bring your ass home. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and then riding bikes with the homie. I mean, because back in the day, I used to have so many friends. It was like the, the Mexican Sandlot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, that's just, we used to break into schools, go yeah. to the dumps, make ramps, break into house, whatever. Your homie didn't have a bike. He was riding on the, on the back, right on there the on pegs. the pegs or on the handlebar. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, now, the handlebar is more you. for the girls so you can, <laughs> you know. I mean, huh? See, like, excuse me, my hand fell down. Uh -huh. So, uh, <laughs> other than that. So, Stranger Things, uh, I think the last one I series i started seeing was a show called messiah yeah thought it was i was pretty dope mm -hmm. and uh i just started this new fucking uh dracula okay there's a dracula i like a lot of horror shit okay uh, um there's a series on netflix called dracula i finished that one too so now i gotta find something else to watch i mean i watch like doc i like dark documentaries yeah on something like you know i'll be watching like killer shit like like or people that just like you see on the media like 10 years ago and then they finally do a bio doc on them like jeffrey epstein that fucker like yeah i mean although i got into it i was like after the third fourth girl i was like it's the same shit like so i mean sad to say but it is like right. you know and then you know what where that documentary lost me when one girl said this and i'm not saying she's lying i'm not trying to i'm just gonna tell you what i saw that's right. it when she said that um she was there she was forced to do things she didn't want to do and then they asked her how long were you there oh six years hmm. and he said did he ever hold you against your will no he used to take me everywhere he paid for my schooling and everything what did he make you do well he was getting naked and i give him body rubs yeah so my whole thing is like you could have left could've he didn't left. hold you against your but you stayed six years all right oh she admitted to that then yeah she okay. admitted to that so when i so when i saw that i kind of lost me and i was like you know what all right, I, you know, whatever happened, happened. Now, the R. Kelly one, uh, that was a different one, too. That was an eye-opener right there. Bro. Hey, he had a hell of a lawyer because they caught him on film, and he proved that that wasn't him, even though it was him. So, <laughs> so. What lawyer was that? Yeah. Just in case I need to hire him, in case I was supposedly somewhere I didn't, wasn't supposed to be. Yeah, exactly, and he got off, bro. But, you know, but you think he's ever going to get out? I don't think so, bro. I know, I know some shit went down, though, about a month ago, a few weeks ago, where... He got beat up by an inmate or something like that because there were protesters outside the jail or something like that and causing uh -huh. ruckus and ended up, uh, I think they put the jail, uh, the, prison, the inmates on lockdown or something like that. Wow. Or they had to spend time in the hole because of R. Kelly. So, I, you know, the dude was just like bum rushed him, whatever. Like, this is all because of you, fool. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Oh, now, nice. uh, let me ask you this. Uh, where exactly or where originally did you grow up at? Um, like I mentioned earlier, I grew up in Orange County, Santana, I, uh, up until uh, my uh, my fresh my sophomore year. Okay. And then I moved to the IE in Lennon Park Riverside. Okay. Yeah. And that's pretty much where you stayed. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Okay. And what what uh, would you say elementary, junior high, or high schools did you attend? Uh, I went to Diamond Elementary. Um, I went to a couple actually, because I I just man as a kid I wasn't that. You know, student that would just sit there and do his work, man. Like right. I, I had eighty, and I see my son, I go, damn, that's me right there, probably, because I was just everywhere. I would get antsy, so my mom would always have to move me, man. Either I get in trouble or fight or whatever, and um, I went from like Catholic schools to like fundamental schools <laughs> to just regular, like you know what I'm saying, basic uh -huh. um, education. And I was like, I went to Diamond Elementary, and then uh, I ended up going to Carr Junior High right across the street and all three all three schools were like right across the street from each other so it was diamond and you had car intermediate and then uh you had santa Ana valley okay yeah okay. yeah yeah uh growing up you play any sports at all i did man big time sport basketball and baseball man those were my thing i started at uh in fact that was a way to keep me out of you know gangs and stuff mom would always keep me um 
active, you know, she always tried because she was a single mom. So uh, she put me in sports heavy and I took liking to it because yeah. I had an older uncle who, you know, he played sports. So, you know, normally you just kind of gravitate towards your, yeah. your elder, you know, your siblings or what have you um, next to Ken. And, and I played basketball from like maybe when I was, uh, I think, seven all the way up to like 15, 16 through high school. And then baseball, the same thing. I think I started like my minor year, like at uh, eight years old. What, uh, what were you better at, basketball or baseball? Well, you said you was about to uh, I say baseball. Okay. Yeah, I was a pitcher, bro. Really? Pitcher, and then I played the outfield pretty well. Shortstop, infield, I was okay, mm -hmm. but pitching was my thing. Yeah, uh, you ever get close to getting any type of scholarship or anything? Nah, bro. In fact, once I, uh, once I like, you know, got to the point where, um. They told me you had to have grades to play. <laughs> Going back to that student thing, I was like, wait, hold yeah. on a second. I'm, ki I'm killing it on Little League. <laughs> wait a minute, I'm playing school, and it's like, boom, I didn't hit that grade. And uh, sorry, man, you don't you didn't hit the grade point average. You can't play this year. I was like, what? I was like, but, I mean, I, I think there's where it just pretty much ended. Bro. <laughs> like, right, I, right. And, and the reason why is I, I didn't give up on my dream. It was just I already had started getting into music. Okay. And I started finding a new passion. Okay. But that was my original passion to be a professional okay. baseball player. Uh, speaking about music, um, growing up at home, what would you say was played at home as a kid growing up? What type of music would your parents play? Moms, I would I would dig into her eight track tapes, bro. Okay. Teddy Pendergrass, uh, to her vinyls, to uh, you know Saturday Night Fever, John Travolta. My mom used to go to the discos a lot. You know what I'm saying when yeah. I was younger because we lived with my grandparents. So, you know, they would watch me and she'd go out. She was, you know, on the weekends with her girlfriends and they go dancing at Fandangos or <laughs> uh, there's a couple other places out there. I can't even tell them, but she loved to dance. So she had a lot of disco. So yeah. all, all the disco influence um, was from my mom. Um, all the uh, old school funk and like, uh, you know, Prince, Paisley Park days, that whole era was influenced to me by my uncle was really like my brother. So we, we lived with them and my grandparents. And so one end of the house, you'd be hearing, you know what I'm saying, old school funk and then hip hop and even some new wave in there, some Adam Ant and all that Hell stuff. Yeah. Like he listened to everything. And then on the other side, you hear my mom bumping her disco, so. Oh shit. Yeah, it was dope. You, you know what was dope about those days? How we had double album. Remember we would open it and <laughs> sometimes it would be like the Saturday Night Fever album cover. Right. Or like the Grease album cover. Those were dope. Today, it, it, it's like, um, I know we can download music or go to YouTube, yeah. but there, to me, I feel that this generation has a lot missing. For an example, I often like to share that this generation will never experience walking into a store mm -hmm. and actually seeing somebody buy their CD or their cassettes, right. you know, like the way we had it. You sure. Know? Or we had in stores and people would come and, you know, whether it was Tower Records, Sam Goody's, Music Plus, yep. uh, um, the warehouse. Music Land. Yeah. Sam Goody's. I feel uh, I feel the same way. No, you're right. It's, it's kind of like a, a, a present that you get and you can't wait to open it up. And I remember running to the stores and going to see if this was out on that day. And you could even see it from afar. Like you see the letter <laughs> and you go, damn, it's already empty. Like, oh, man, they got it on display somewhere yes. or, or whatnot. But. Yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying, man. And I remember the albums because I used to have them all there. Uh, man, top albums, Fat Boys. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, put up, stick them. Um, let's see here. We have Ice T, the Crush Groove album, Beach Street, all that. Well, I grew up in the '80s, and that's all I was doing, man. In my room was just really just, you know, learn how to break dance. If I put them all together, tape them up, and then you know, spin on them, whatnot, and you know that whole breaking era and. It was really a good era. And then my, my uncle had his crates and boom, he had all the Curtis Blows and like the OG stuff, you know, yeah. early 80s. It just all seemed so far away. But in reality, bro, it was like within five years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just when you're younger, you just look at things differently. Yeah. But you definitely got to appreciate it, man. Um, I, I, I wish they could. And I think we were just having this conversation on the way up here. That's why a lot of these uh, places are selling turntables now. Yeah. And vinyl's coming back now. Yeah. And they're repressing them, man. Yeah. Man, I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. You, you know, let me encourage you, and if you don't already have this idea or not, you got classics like Latin Active, Sunday Afternoon. Right. You know what would sell really, really good? Those on 45. 
Yeah, we're just saying that. <laughs> You're right. You, you know, think the DJs will buy? I think just for collector's items, that's people what are that selling is. that out. That's what that is. I and mean, are selling out because just to put them up. Um, DJ Cazell, right. um, he was here when he brought uh, Mariah Avila here. Right. And we were talking about that. And he said, dude, if you were to put like sit in the park, I'm not your puppet on one. Yeah. He said, I could sell it easy for like 25 bucks, if not more, for a 45. Is that right? Yeah. And I said, for that's what I said. I said, Bro. Hey, Cazell, <laughs> homie, hit me. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I'm, I know we can still make money, bro. Let's get it. You know? and, and to be able to have classic songs still 29, 30 years later speaks volumes, bro. Yeah. Speaks volumes because today's music, it's hard to listen to a lot of the music that's out today and think that people will probably even remember it 10 years from now, if not five. You know what? Uh, I got schooled by an old school cat, and I've, I've told this story a couple times. Um, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, you know, producers, mm -hmm. Janet Jackson, all the list goes on. Um, but I interviewed Terry once, and he, um, I had uh, asked him, I said, what's your favorite old school song, you know, of, of yours? Yeah. And he looked at me all crazy. He was like, well, what do you mean? Old school? I go, <laughs> I ain't old school. What I do, he goes, what I do is timeless. And he says, because... What y'all are doing nowadays or what these artists are doing, whatever, they're, they're, they're sampling from us, which means they're playing it today, which means another 20 years from now, it's, it, it, it belongs. It's a timeless song. Yeah. It'll never go away. You can always play it. And I, and I, I just learned something that day. So, I mean, yeah, we got old school funk. There's different labels, whatnot. But when he said that, he, he really made sense. And now I see eight-year-olds on their, you know, um, or five-year-olds on their, on their daddy's shoulders singing my, my my songs at at concerts and i'm going wow it's crazy how music works how it's passed through you physically you you physically you know you visually see it in front of you physically and that's how we were growing up right listening to our uh, parents yeah. playing us the music so that that's just how, how it's passed down and i think everybody out there that grew up on, on our music was sharing that down to your kids yeah yeah, yeah that's awesome those are awesome sure. memories um, your earliest, how would you say, uh, remembrance of hip hop? I know you mentioned the Fat Boys um, and other groups. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, again, mine I always refer to because I was like in sixth grade when I first heard Rapper's Delight. Right. I heard the Rapture by Blondie, and then eventually Melly Mel, Grandmaster Flash, and those guys. Right. You growing up uh, on, on your end of town, what would you say was some of the first hip hop songs that you heard? Hmm. Lottie Dottie, we like to party. We, you know that song, Slick Rick, Dougie Fresh? I lived about maybe a mile away from, from my school. And I would rap that song for at least two, three weeks straight, bro. Because like, yeah. I knew by the time I finished it, like four times I was at school. And I would just memorize it, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, LL Cool J, the I'm Bad album. That was my eighth grade year, you know. Um, who else? Uh, that's the that's the album that had the song The Wop. Remember that was the Wop, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go Cut Creator, Go Off. Man, he had a lot of good. You know, that whole album was the shit. And then um, it was albums like uh, all the Beastie Boys, man. License to Ill. We grew up in an era where it was just now today. Again, it's timeless, but those are legends. I mean, yeah. Run DMC's Raising Hell. You know that tour back then. Yeah. You know the Raising Hell tour. Like those were one of the greatest tours in history. Yeah. And to grow up, you know, living that. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, it was dope. And then I remember Easy had just dropped, you know, Easy E, Dope Man, or, or with, uh, with with NWA. And I was, you know, walking and that was the, that was the, that was the shit. You know, you go to school and it's like somebody would bring a new cassette tape, a rhodium cassette tape, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or, you know, they got from the rhodium and it's like, man, you got that new one on there. Like, you know, I just so many songs run through my head, man. Uh, I, I was like, I used to buy those, man. I, I was telling you off air that um, my boy across the street, he was older than me, he had an Impala, right? And uh, we used to sit, I used to sit shotgun, he would take me, I was like 12, something like that. We'd go riding around, he had a box of cassettes, and he'd have to, I'd have to uh, sit, on, sit on it, because I was so low like right, this, right? right? So I would sit on it, and there was a bunch of like rhodium tapes, bro, and they were all right there, and, and I would always see, which is the new one, which is the one that came out this week, which came out this right. week? You know, and I remember like hearing like uh, King T or, or, or Easy Does It or um, I remember Battle Cat. He was DJ yeah. Battle Cat. He would have his mixes. Tony A, you know what I'm saying? Like all these cats and just remixes. And a lot of the 808 came out of those cassettes, yes. man. It was heavy. Yes. 
Yes. The 808 boom with the Nissan trucks. Man, I, I keep talking about the 80s. Man. That was a great <laughs> fucking era, man. I mean, and, and that, like you just mentioned, and let's throw in the Aquanet hairspray with the girls with the lion hairs. You know, <laughs> dope era. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, think about the 80s for a second. We have dope R&B. Okay. We have dope funk. We have dope rock bands. Yeah. Dope hip hop. I mean, so many uh, new wave. The disco slash uh, a high energy era. Mm-hmm. We had, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Lisa, Lisa, what, what did we call those? Um, freestyle. 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 Mm-hmm. So, so much genres of music yeah. during that time, bro. And we had a new wave that came, which was MTV, music videos. Yes. What did you think when music videos came out? Oh, it was like the best thing since sliced bread, right? Right. You know, um, then we also had popping and breaking were, mm. were on fire at that time. Yeah, I sucked. I wasn't very good. I said I, I used to practice, but... That shit just, nah, I never got that, man. I was too damn tall. My legs, when I was doing windmills, I used to kick over buckets and... But you could do it. Yes, I could See, do I it. couldn't do windmills. I could never grabbers, mastered it. I could do it. <laughs> I mean, I, I grew up around them uh, cats, man. I mean, just, you know, Turbo and Ozone were my heroes, man. No shit. Well, yeah. to, to let me surprise you with something. Uh, Boogaloo Shrine and Michael Chambers, Turbo, live three blocks away from over here. Is so, that right? Yeah, yeah. That's who we pretty much grew up with. So you would see him, huh? Yeah, well, he actually... Long story, but he actually taught me how to pop. We spent one summer together. Mm. And this is how I met Steve Yano. Mm -hmm. He taught me how to pop one summer. I was 11 years old. I go to the swamp meet with um, uh, my mom to go sell. I'm a swamp meet baby. Mm -hmm. My brother was already DJing and he says, I'm going to go buy some records. You want to roll with me? And I said, "Uh, who are you going to go? You know, where are you going to go? It's over here, some Japanese guy. You know, for us uh, 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 Mexican people, if you're Japanese, Korean, Filipino, we call you guys chinos. Mm-hmm. Uh, chino. right. uh, why we do, do that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, chino. So we, I went, and I remember he played a song called Wicca Rap. Uh, mm. uh, what's the name? Coolio sampled it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just started popping the moves that Michael Chambers, uh, Turbo, right. you know, taught me. And I caught Steve's eye. So Steve calls me and he says, hey, he says, uh, let me see you do some of those moves again. So I started popping. Yeah. And he goes, can you pick up one of these record crates? And I said, like, yeah. So I picked it up. And he said, I want to give you a job. I said, like, for real? And he's, so I'm thinking, like, okay, cool. Yeah. He goes, I'll give you 20 bucks for two days. I'm thinking video games because I like Star Castle, Centipede, right. Asteroids, and all that. Right. Shit. You're just doing video games. Yeah. So I started working with him. But every so often, he'll tell me, go in front of the stand and pop to draw in a crowd. Mm-hmm. And that was my history, the beginning with Steve Yano. Steve was a hustler, huh? Yes. <laughs> I see where you get it from now. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so now, at what point would you say um, did you begin, at what age, I should say, you began to put, you know, the pen to the paper and start to, you know, mess around in, as in writing? Well, I started in eighth grade. I mean, uh, not make a long story short, I had a couple of homies that were rapping and uh, I just walked up on them all day, uh, one day and I was like, hey man, what's up? Like, can I be down? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what? Right. What, what, what'd you got Oh man, you can't rap, blah 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 blah. I was like, well, I mean, what's up? I mean, I listened to rap like, how hard is it? You know, and they were like, well, go home, write a rap, and come back tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? School. Right. So I did. I went home, wrote my verse, came back, boom. I went to lunch benches. That's where it went down. And you know, uh, the homie just throwing a beat, and I just started, you know, rapping in the paper, whatever. And next thing you knew, I was in the crew, man. And no it shit. just led from there to like. Uh, you know, high school, uh, excuse me, this is junior high, junior high dances. We were rapping at the dances and uh, uh, we did a, even a talent show. We did a, a lip sync contest. We did a Beastie Boys and uh, we did a <laughs> time to get ill. What's the time? It's time to get ill. And it was me, uh, my boy Fidel and then my, my boy Louie. And I just I just found a liking to the, you know, to the stage right there. I, I go, man, this is something that I could see myself doing later. Because as I mentioned, you know, baseball was my thing. I was in that, but... Uh, Man, I always just been like wanting to be, you know, on the, on the stage part of okay. life, you know what I mean? Okay. So, uh, at that time, who would you say? I know you mentioned the Beastie Boys were some of the your favorite rappers that you can say I kind of at now uh, again at that time we just I kind of liked my style too. Was there anybody? Uh, I know you mentioned the Beastie Boys. Okay, so anybody that, that played a big part in my yes. my role when I first started. Well, yes. then let's fast forward to like tenth, ninth grade, tenth grade, Rakim. Oh. Hands down, Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, and uh, man, those guys were ahead of their time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I grew up on that. And it was East Coast, 
for me at the time. I mean, yeah, I bumped Easy, I, I you know, NWA and and whatnot. But the, on the cassettes, they were both. Right. So I would listen to both, and I remember when um, Eric B for President came out. Oh man. I was still living in Santa. I was like eighth grade, seventh grade. I heard that. I was like, this dude, <laughs> he's killing it. I know. You know what I mean? And I came in the door. I said it before. I never, I like, it was just riding the beat. And I was like, this dude's on another level. And I was like, I had to learn that. You know what I mean? Because that was the first time I was introduced to to brag rap, as they would say. Right, right, right. Versus someone like Slick Rick, you know what I'm saying? Telling a story. Right. You know, you had a lot of stories back then. Yeah. LL Cool J, I Need Love. That was huge at the time. And, and first love song, by the way. <laughs> and um, But that was dope. And it was just... To, to Malcolm McLaren, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, Buffalo Gals, Hobo Scratch, yeah. like the just the beats were just not with something about the '80s, man. And um, but Rock Kim was the one that that made me really just want to put a pen to the paper. You know what? Um, I was telling my son that because I always because he always asked me who's my favorite two rappers growing up, and I said to me it was in no specific order. It was either Rock Kim or Karis One. To me, that was like the epitome of hip hop. Right. Me. After that, of course, you can add like people like Public Enemy. Um, you know, Nick Setter, but other yeah. crews. See, I never got into KRS. I, I, that's one dude I did, except my philosophy. Okay. That was the, <laughs> but anyway. So so what happened was that, um, what because my son asked me, and I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it. I would give him like certain songs to listen to, and he would give me some of his new songs to listen to. Right. And I couldn't get into his shit. Yeah. And How old is he? Uh, uh, he now, well now he's, 29. Okay, but 29. So, uh, but this was like, I don't know, six, 90s? seven years ago. Okay, all right. Not yeah, that so long. I gave him early 90s hip hop and he gave me some of his stuff that was like six, seven years ago. Right. And I just couldn't get into it. And then, but he liked all of mine. So then what I did, I looked up how old, I mean, when was Rakim born? Mm -hmm. And then I looked up when, uh, um, the, the song by Kerry, the one you just mentioned. Philosophy? I mean, no, I'm sorry, by Eric B. Uh, came Eric in B is president? Eric B is president. I looked up when that was released, and he was a teenager. Mm -hmm. I want to say 19, but I don't want to be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was young. He was a teenager. Right, 19, 18. So when I told my son that, he couldn't believe that a teenager was kicking like that. Right. You know, so then I said, now take that teenager to today's teenagers. That's what I'm talking about. There's, right. There's the difference. And he just, like, he just agreed. But I think, man, you're a product of your environment, bro. Like... If you rap, and especially at that time, hip hop was just born, you know what I'm yes. saying, so to speak, 10 years prior, or even during that era, it was just new to, it hadn't even cracked mainstream at all. It was strictly underground. So yeah. everything you heard, you just wanted, you ate it up, ate it up, just like K Day, man. That's why it was, you know, phenomenal. It is what it is today. Yeah. It gets well respected because it was an AM radio station that just blew the hell up. And where did you go for your hip hop? You didn't have those tapes. You go to K Day yeah. because mainstream radio was playing still Bruce, Billy Joel, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Bruce Springsteen. You know what I'm saying? All these yeah. Duran Duran, which was cool too because yeah. I grew up on that too. But if you wanted that raw hip hop, it was K Day, yeah. bro. We're gonna go ahead and take a little break. We're gonna go ahead and uh, press pause right there. When we come back, I want to talk about how you met Bobby. Okay. Sure. So thank you, old DM, once again for coming. Uh, we're going to be back in about 10 minutes, so make sure you call somebody, take somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, let them know that ODM's in the motherfucking building. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Go get yourself a drink. We'll be right back. So violent, Tony. <laughs> Welcome to Rodium Radio, and I am your host, Tony A. The Wizard. We started a GoFundMe page because we need you to help us meet our goal. And our goal is to release a Chicano rap documentary, and we need you to be a part of this. Everyone who contributes will have certain incentives offered to them. For an example, I'll name one. Your name will be on the credits of the film. Everyone who gives, everyone who contributes, uh, their name will be on the credits. That's just one thing that we have to offer it. But yet, if you read the description, you see other incentives for your contribution. If you've seen the Rodian Mixtape documentary, you will not be disappointed with this documentary shining light on Chicano rap, the Chicano culture. It is something that can be used as an educational tool uh, now and in the future. So once again, help us meet our goal so that we can start production. And remember this, we have a voice and we will be heard.
What it do, what it do, it's Mr. Little One chilling on Rhodium Radio with the one and only Tony A and John motherfucking Elkin, boy. Hey, what up? It's your boy, Mr. Shadow. You're watching Rhodium Radio with my homeboy, Tony A, the wizard. You know what time it is. Yeah, what up? This is Mr. Night Owl, and you're listening to Rhodium Radio with the legendary Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. Yo, what's cracking? Nosotros somos Aqua. Estamos aquí con Tony A, the wizard. You know Rodium what it is. Radio, damn it. You know what it is. Yo, what up? This is Mellow Man Ace at Padrino, and you tuned in to Rhodium Radio with my man Tony A. Keep it locked. Yo, what's cracking? It's your boy OG Arabian Prince from the world's most dangerous group, NWA. Sit here with my boy Tony A, the wizard, on Rhodium Radio. What's up, everybody? It's your homegirl, Magic Girl, and you are now listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Yo, what's up? This is Bozo, a.k.a. Emiliano. You tune into Rhodium Radio on Tony Vince's YouTube channel. Let's get it. What up, what up? This is Mr. Soto. You guys are now in tune to Rhodium Radio right here on Tony Vision on YouTube. Yep. Check it out. This is MC Poncho on the MIC. Shout out to Tony A, the Wizard, Rhodium Radio. You already know. What up? This is DJ Trick, Spanish Fly, and you're watching Tony A on the Rhodium Radio Show. Big G, Rhodium Radio, Tony A in full effect. Stay tuned, watch, listen. This is how we're doing it over here. Yo, what up? I'm out here. This Big Daddy Swoles. I'm jamming with my man, Tony A, the wizard, out here on Rhodium Radio. The podcast is off the hook. Check us out. This is DJ Clientel, and you are listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Yeah, 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 this baby bounce here with Tony A, the wizard. You are now tuned in to the Rhodium Radio. We do it for the people, you hear me? Mike check, Mike check. Ernie G from Proper Dos. And I'm listening to Tony A, the motherfucking wizard on Rhodium Radio. And if you don't know, you should know. What's up, everybody? This is Soren Baker. I'm the author of the book, The History of Gangster Rap, in stores now worldwide. And you're listening to Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. Make sure to check it out. We talk about the Rhodium mixtapes. We're here, Soren Baker, Rhodium Radio. Y'all, this is Speedy Greg, and I'm chilling with Tony the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Hey, this is Swifty Blue. I'm right here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A the Wizard. Stay tuned. It's the KAS here live on Rhodium Radio with the one and only Tony A the Wizard. What up, y'all? This is Kiki Smooth, the first Mexican rapper out of Compton, rich and ruthless, and you're listening to the Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Grand Wizard, El Mago himself. Hey, Compton's in the house. What's up? It's quite the Yes Guy with my Harbor Auto Guy homeboy, Tony A, the Wizard, on Rhodium Radio. Yes Guy. Hey, what's up, gente? It's your homeboy, Duende. You're tuned into Rhodium Radio with my homeboy, Tony A, the Wizard. Ya te la sabes, wey. What up, what up? It's your boy Baldacci the Beast, F for Music, Face of LA, right here at Rhodium Radio. Make sure y'all tune in. Your boy Tony A the Wizard. This is Kelvin Anderson, owner of the world famous VIP Records. And you listen to my man Tony A the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Yeah, yeah, what up? It's Lil Black, you the Brown Super Bowl, and you checking out Rhodium Radio with the homeboy Tony A the Wizard. Yo, what's cracking? It's your boy OG Big Wicked. Real Ones Apparel, Orange County. I hear with my boy, 28 The Wizard. Rhodium Radio. Y'all make sure to peep it. Peace. Que tranza raza, aquí su servidor, sinful and pecador. And you listening to Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony A, The Wizard. Check, check, what's up? It's your boy, Capital I, man, from the Mexican crew. And you're tuning in to Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony A, The Wizard. This motherfucker's a legend. What's up, y'all? This is Chris the Glove, and you're watching the Rhodium Radio Show on Tony Vision on YouTube. What's up? This is Mr. D on Rhodium Radio, kicking back with the homeboy, Tony A. Yo, this is Fancy the Boss. Tune in on YouTube at Rhodium Radio with Tony A the Wizard. What's up? This is Leah Farsayer, a.k.a. the Dragon, the Serpent, the Spear. I'm on Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony the Wizard. Hey man, Nick V and Eric V, the Baker Boys in the house, hanging out with Rhodium Radio, and the one and only Tony the Wizard. Tony the Wizard, aka Kylo Ren, Ooh. right here on YouTube, Sundays and Wednesdays. Tony Vision, subscribe Tony now. Tony Vision, yeah, Make yeah, yeah. Big baby. What's good with it? This is Old Creep, aka Jay Stompanato. I'm putting it down for Orange County on the Rhodium Radio Show by West Coast legend DJ Tony A. 
We up and out this bitch. What's up with it, dog? It's West Coast Gilly on Rodeo Radio with the legend Tony A. the Wizard on Tony Vision. You know what it is, West Coast to the fullest. Believe that. What's up, everybody? This is Stefan Royer listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, what up? It's your boy Doughboy Tony. You tuned into Rhodium Radio with West Coast legend Tony A. the Wizard. What up? It's your boy Lottie the G, straight out of Santa Ana, CA, and we're right here live in the mix with the West Coast legend Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio, Tony Vision on YouTube. Yo, what's up, world? This is Cool 187, above the law in the building. We get tuned into Rhodium Radio. Well, my man Tony Gay, the wizard. Blah. What's up? This is Darren Vegas. You're on Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Real West Coast hip hop history right here. Yo, yo, what up? Sleepy Milo in the house here at the Rhodium Radio with my boy Tony A, the wizard, giving us our voice back. One of the realest motherfuckers I know. What's up, homie? Show me Frankie Quinones, a.k.a. Creeper from Cholo P. And you're listening to Tony A, the wizard on Rhodium Radio. That's what's up right there. <laughs> Hey, yo, what's up, man? This is of the Savage. I'm right here with Tony A, the Wizard, Rody on Radio. Everybody stay tuned, man. It's a motherfucking hit. Yo, shout out to Rody on Radio, Tony A, the Wizard, your boy Pablo Nunez right here in the studio. Be about it, people. Que onda, muchacho? I bien este miro. King with the black skin and negrito de los angelitos. And you're checking out that Rody on Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. This is Wicked from the Brown Side here on Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. You know. What up? It's your homeboy Infinite TGM, chilling with Tony A, the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure you guys go check that out. What up, everybody? This is Wicked Baby Doll, and I'm chilling with Tony A at Rhodium Radio. Check it out. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow him on Instagram. What's good? What's good? It's your boy Spanky Loco, and you tuning in to Rhodium Radio. With that motherfucking legend, Mr. Tony A. You know what time it is, Wes. Hey, what up? This is Bellow the Dome. And this is Dominator. And we came straight from the 805 ready to slap that motherfucking meat on your grill, bitch. Rhodium Radio, Central Coast Click. What up? What up with it? This your boy OG McGrew, Los Angeles Airbrush Artist, Big Chillin' on site with the homie Tony the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. All gas, no brakes. Let's get it. Man, you're now listening to LA Icon, man, right here live with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard on Rodium Radio. What's up, what's up? This is Essa Daz, the Spanish Fly, with that reintroduction right here on Rodium Radio with my boy, the wizard, Tony A. Yeah, yeah, what up? It's the Spanish Fly MC, Big MOC, Mr. Mox MC, on the Rodium Radio show, baby, with Tony A, the Grand Wizard. Let's go. Johnny D, from Spanish Fly, on Rodium Radio. The one and only deal with the giant Cheeto. <laughs> hey, what's up, everyone? This is Trish Toledo, and I'm over here with Tony A, John Motherfucking Elkins, and DG Media at Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl Blanca. Bobby D presents Uncle Snoop's Army. Chilling right here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you tune in Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. on YouTube. What up, West Coast and all hip-hop fans? This is your girl, Violet Brown, and I'm here with Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, this is Daniel Jones, the D to the motherfucking G Media Clips. Here with your boy, Tony A. the Wizard on the Rhodium Radio Show. Check, check, one, two, one, two. This is Roger Live, and you are in tune to the sounds of Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio West Coast. Yo, what's up? This is John motherfucking Elkins, and you're tuning into Rhodium Radio with my homeboy, DJ Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rhodium Radio is live up in this yacht. Welcome back, everybody, to Rodian Radio, episode 98. And uh, before we continue our interview with my special guest, let me go ahead and make one special announcement. I need everybody to subscribe to Freaky Tales Podcast. We go live every Friday where we discuss the paranormal, freaky tales, spooky story type of shit. So on YouTube, it is Freaky Tales Podcast. 
Uh, once again, we encourage you, if you guys have any scary stories, go ahead and email them, and we share them at the end of the show, podcast at gmail.com, but we'll get into that later. So without further ado, once again, please allow me to introduce ODM of Lighter Shade of Brown. Hey, tell so, me yay. My brother, so um, I'm having a great time because we're, we're starting from the very beginning till the present, but we're somewhere, somewhat in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you're rapping... You belonged to a group. I want to say you did the junior high or high school. Uh -huh. And from there, at what point would you say, or how long after that, was it that you met uh, Bobby? Uh, was there more to it before him? or? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, because I stopped junior high in ninth grade. I stopped rapping because I was playing more into baseball. And then I started getting, I started getting into, you know, trouble and, you know, running the streets, being a little travieso, man. And, yeah. Uh, you know, hanging out with the homies, whatnot, just getting in trouble. So my uncle had gotten married, the same uncle I was talking about we live with, and he had met someone who lived out in Riverside, i.e. So he ended up getting married and uh, moving back over there. And uh, he told my mom, because, you know, we're a small, immediate family. And um, he said, hey, this would be a good spot to raise Robert. You know, I know he's getting into a lot of trouble. You know, hey, let's move out this way, you know, yeah. be a better life for him. Uh, so my mom was like, okay, so my grandparents ended up selling their house in Santana and then we moved to uh, Riverside, bought a house out there and we just kind of just, you know, migrated over there. And, uh, so long story short, I started going to um, school in Riverside and, um, high school, La Sierra. And uh, there were some homies there that were like, uh, rapping, right? And I, here I was, I thought I was like, chingon, you know, coming out outsider, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, I'm going to rap where, you know, where I'm from. And uh, they uh, they let me know real quick, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't where you're from, homie, it's where you at, you know what right. I'm saying? So, uh, with that being said, I mean, they started rapping at the lunch bridge. I was like, man, let me go write this verse. So, boom, I just, I just picked up a pen. You know, once you got it, right. you got it, bro. It yeah. never leaves you. And we're talking maybe a year. You know what I mean? Okay. That had gone by since I wrote my last rap. So, boom. Wrote a rap. And then we used to battle, man. We battle at the lunch benches. And um, there's where I noticed, though. I saw that I saw, like, behind me. You know what I'm saying? After yeah. I would finish my verse. There was only a handful of Mexicans, you know what I'm saying, right there at the uh, where, where I went to school. It's predominantly, you know, white area. Uh, you had a handful of Mexicans. And then, you know, a little small percentage of black. And, um, but the Mexicans that were there, bro, they had my back, bro. Like, they were just like, oh, like, you know, because I would just, you know, put it down. I went by little R. That's okay. what I used to go by. <laughs> and, uh, and I would just, you know, do my thing. And uh, there's why, I, like, slowly but surely started seeing a movement, you know, like, okay, all right. Like, I'm one of them, you know what I'm saying? They're proud because I'm putting it down on the mic, you know what I mean? So to speak. Right rapping about you know us you know what i'm saying yes. whatnot but to me it was like i was just hip-hop remember i'm growing up on rock can big daddy Kane. i'm just spitting bars the whole latino you know chicano movement didn't come it didn't register yet until later which we'll get into but uh i had an artist you might have heard of her and uh, her name was big lady k yeah and she was the first female on ruthless records easy e mm -hmm. and uh she actually was from Riverside and she got transferred over to my school and I saw her and I had right away I recognized who she was because I bought her album cover right. at down at Music Plus or wherever it was like two weeks ago. I go, man, that's Big Lady K. So finally I went up to her, you know, I said, hey, man, I'm a fan. You know what I mean? And her brother was there and I was like, hey, what's up? Hook me up with your manager. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, like right man. away. I was like, I'm trying to get some. I'm trying to get in. And she was like, all right, let me hear you rap. So I did my thing, you know, my 16 bars, whatever. I didn't know what 16 bars were, by the way. Right, right. Whatever right. it was, just this long rap that I did. She's like, okay, okay, okay. All right, man, you pretty dope for a Mexican. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just remember her telling me, I was like, hey, call it what you want. What's up? And he was just like, all right. So she walked me over to a payphone at the school. Payphone kids. And it's one of those, you put the thing in, doo -doo, you dial up. And then she had me rap for her manager. And... I must have did something right because he got my number. Then boom, next thing you know, in a week or two weeks later, we were doing demos. Inside my bedroom, inside my house, you know, we bring the four track. DJ Jam and James, shout out to James if you're watching. He's part of the K-Day crew too, man. Yes. Jam and James, the whole movement, Ralph M, all them. Yeah. James was uh, very, uh, uh, how do I say, 
you know, he's the man. He's my very first producer I got introduced to. I started doing demos. And I'm get, I said a long story short, but I'm giving no, no. you I'm giving you exactly how it run. Keep ran going, down, bro. Keep going. And we started recording demos in my four track. My manager at the time um, was shopping my demo. I did a three song demo. I think it was uh, El Barrio, and then it was another song, Oye Como Va. I did a song, I rapped over at Santana, Oye Como Va. Don't ask me how, I don't know what the hell it was, but I rapped about. But it was just all brag raps at the time. And uh, it was another one, whatever. And I remember he, uh, he came to me and said, we got to change your name. And I said, well, what's wrong with Little R? You know what I'm saying? Robert, homie. <laughs> like, yeah, that's my name. You can't, you can't just cut my name in half like that. What the hell? Exactly. Like, yeah. exactly. Uh, but now he says, uh, let me come up with something and I'll call you in the morning. So I said, all right. So I said, hey, man, I got it. And I said, what? What is it? And he goes, ODM. I said, all right, what is that? There's got to be something behind it. And he goes, well, you're a solo rapper? Because I was solo at the time. I hadn't met Bobby. And he goes, one, you see, call yourself dope. You know what I'm saying? You think you're dope and Mexican. Let's let's get it. All three. One dope Mexican. I said, all right, let's go, man. I just wanted to get in the studio. Right. That's how I was. Like, I was, you know, 16 years old, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and I just wanted to do my thing and come out. Like, here's my opportunity. ODM, let's roll with it. So after... That the way I met Bobby was um, Melo Man Ace okay. had dropped uh, Mentirosa, okay. and uh, he was doing his thing and in the clubs he would come to the IE, he would perform out there and the clubs there. And I remember the girls from school they would come to they would come to school the next day. I saw Melo Man Ace. I was like, first of all, how the hell you get it? Never mind. <laughs> Whatever you went and saw him, I right. get it. So uh, they had come back with keychains and everything. So he had that out, and then. Um, my manager's view or his uh, plan was to me be the first, you know, quote unquote Chicano rapper out mainstream. You know what I'm saying? Mexicano here West Coast. And just when you knew it, like Kid Frost dropped La Raza. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then as soon as that came out, my manager was like, ah, we got to do a group. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really? Like, listen, I, we wasted no time. So what he did was my DJ, which was uh, Fabe Love. Fabian, um, he knew another rapper he went to school with because they grew up on the other side of town, you know, than where I was. And he says, man, I got this cat, you know what I mean? He's dope. He, man, he does covers to like all these rappers, Heavy D, Public Enemy, Chuck D, blah, blah, blah. He's a rapper, but, uh, you know, he, he, he does those, but, you know, he's got a good voice. Right. And we're just going, hmm, okay, all right, well, who's this cat? So that happened to be Bobby, you know? So he brought Bobby to the studio one day and we had uh we linked up and we were uh just kind of you know feeling each other out. i always say like pit bulls you know what i'm saying right, like right. sniff each other out like because it's a competitive thing because i'm still a rapper i still got an ego and i'm 16. so you can imagine like you know and i grew up on rock and <laughs> like you know right, what i mean like right. i'm ready to you know what i'm saying but uh you know he just had uh he had that mentality. he was a little older than me you know and um we, I just remember we started writing, writing verses together in the same room. It was a matter of fact, we used to drive out here to Glendale. Okay. And there was a, uh, a my uh, manager had a studio apartment in Glendale. And I would drive up here on the weekends when I was in the school. And me, Fabe, D, we, we'd come up here. And then we would just write our demos and the same thing. We'd record them on a four track cassette. You know what I mean? I did it all. You know, I, I did the microphone underneath the, uh, in the closet. That was my studio booth. You know what I mean? With the wire straight to cassette. And James would be up there cooking up beats. And then we would just do our thing. And we started working on a demo. And um, another three song demo. And I think it was TJ Knights was one of them. Uh, El Barrio, like I said. And then... Um, what was the third one? Was it Spill the Wine, I think. Right, right. And um, was, was, which was on our first Brown and Proud album. And we shot that. And it took us one year, I think, before we got signed to Quality Records. Wow. And yeah, but that was a lot of going to record labels, trying to sell right. the idea and this and that. But it was a lot easier, I will tell you, that Frost and Mellow had came already have hit records that just kind of opened the door, really opened the door. Like they kicked it down, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and we just followed right through, man. And uh, and that was the birth of Lighter Shade of Brown. Yeah, you, you know, you know, you said something earlier that I want to touch on. You said that um, uh, Homegirl said um, you're pretty dope for a Mexican. Yeah. Okay. 
it, we know that this game is a predominantly black hip hop game. We right. know that. Um, now, one time when my homies would see me cut and scratch, mm. my black homies would say, you're pretty dope for a Mexican. Right, right. So one day I kind of flipped it around on them. And I said, you, you know that one guy, um, Karis One, that guy can, he can rap pretty good for a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he took that, he offense to that. Right. You know, and I, he goes, why do you say that? And I said, because, I mean, there's great football, Emmy Smith, that guy for a black guy, he can sure <laughs> run, bro. Smart. You know? and, Smart. And I said, dude, you don't realize what you just said. Yeah. You know, but I think a lot of times, uh, see, I don't like to let people get away with that kind of shit. Right, right. So I kind of bring it out. Good. But, uh, Good. But yeah, it, so uh, to me, talent is talent, whether you're, you right. know, we would never say Eminem for a white guy is pretty damn good. Right. He's, he's got talent. Right. You know? And talent comes in all different shapes, sizes, and colors, bro. I think, yeah. again, it, I mean, hands down, I grew up on, on hip hop, man, and, yeah. and it was predominantly black culture, you know yes, what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and uh, like I said, you're a product of what you listen to, and I listened to, and those were my influences, and yeah. I just happened to be a homie. You know, Chicano who grew up out the hood, who yeah, who did his thing and yeah. loved it and appreciate it. I embrace it and I thank you. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I learned from Joe Cooley and I learned from uh, Tony G on pretty much DJing black and the Cuban. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I give it up every time, brother. Yeah, yeah. You know, but sometimes I don't like to be singled out as you're pretty good for a Mexican. You know what's crazy is Ralph M was mm -hmm. Ralph M the Mexican, wasn't right, he? Right, the Mexican. Oh, the Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ralph, man. So, so you guys get signed. Yeah. Let me tell you my little lighter shit of brown story. Okay. I show up to the swamp meet because I used to always go hang out with Steve Yano at the rodeo. Mm. So I would show up to see how my mixtapes were selling. And he goes, um, I want you to check something out. Tell me what you think. And I said, okay. He goes, remember I played you boys in the hood? And I said, yeah. I want you to listen to this. And he plays it. El Barrio. Mm -hmm. He plays it. And I'm like. Who's that? And he goes, Lighter Shade of Brown. What do mm -hmm. you think, dude? And I saw Steve used to talk. And I'm right, like, right. That shit is dope. Check it out. Gave us the two singles or whatever. Steve would always give me two. Yeah. DJ. And I was like, okay, cool, cool. You know what? I'm going to take it home and cut it up or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I started hearing more Spill the Wine. I started hearing the, the other one, Latin Act. There yeah, and whatnot. right. Now, uh, what was, for the people that may not know, your very first single that was dropped? From you, was it TJ Night? TJ Night okay. was a single, yeah. Okay, and how was the response when that came out? Immediately when it hit the airways, I mean, when we hit 99.1, I saw our station out there, which trip, I've been working for them for the last 20 <laughs> years, but uh, man, it was I was in high school, I heard it, and everybody was just embracing it because uh, you didn't hear nothing like that right. on, on the radio. You heard rap, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You, you heard, I mean, you're coming off of just months before, I mean, what was hitting at the time, I think. You know, Young MC, Bust a Move, uh, Candyman, Knocking Boots. Uh, these were all the mainstream hip hop songs at yes. the time. Tone Loc, Wild Thing, Funky Comadina. Uh, so to hear hip hop on there and to see, you know, Mexicanos doing that, right, bro, it was just like whoa. Like everybody just had to take a step back, and yeah. and we knew because, they, you know, they would call like we'd go to the radio station. They do a little bump it or dump it or jam it or slam it type thing, and it was just you could hear it in their voices. And then I went to school the next day, and it was all of a sudden, it was on. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. I was the man, you know what I mean? And um, I was like, yeah, man, we heard your song last night. Man, it won again, it won again, because they would do it every night. They'd repeat the song right. on, on the Jam It or Slam It thing, and you go up against another uh, uh, record. But they just embraced it, bro. Like, it was, it was the start of a new era. You know, and that's a beautiful thing to share, because how many people can say, they had a song on the radio, had a record deal, and were still in high school. Right. You know, I mean, think about that. Oh, I left after that. <laughs> I was gone. <laughs> now, no, real story. Okay, I'll tell you, bro. And, and this is what it is. Like, I, I did, I came out with my song my junior year mm -hmm. and over the summer. And then when I was a senior, that's when it was popping. TJ Nice has dropped. I was already doing, you know, shows. You know, we were touring. We were doing promotional shows, whatnot. Right. Here or there, trying to promote it and then promote the album. That that was coming. Uh, never good at school. I knew there was something that drove me. I knew I didn't know what it was at this point. By my junior year, I knew this is what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to be. And I said, my go, my mom. I was my mom was like, dude, you're crazy. And I was like, mom, but she was always supportive. Like, believe it or not, she supported me. She's like, okay, you know, I see. All right, you got your record deal, okay, in place. And you got to you got to think, like, to be a parent, 
it's like taking a gamble. Of course. Either you're going to tell them no and just crush their dreams and their possible future, you know what I'm saying, because you want them to, to go a certain path. You want them to finish school, go to college, and, and you know, get these degrees, what have you, what, you know. Or you're, you're going to support them and really, you know, uh, uh, be with them all, all along the way with this new journey. And I think she started seeing when we started getting radio play and yeah. doing the shows and whatnot, like, okay, this is really starting to happen. Yeah. So we tried the independent study thing, you know, at homeschool, whatnot. But, bro, I was already, we were, it just happened that quick. Like, we were already touring at, right. like, 17, and I was doing my thing, man. I didn't look back. You know, another thing that I want to add to that is that you will experience something that, sadly to say, that most teenagers today would probably never, ever hear their song on the radio. You know, most what the way most people do today... It's, it's up on Spotify, it's on our platforms, right. it's on YouTube, and those are great te you know, uh, technology <laughs> methods that we can use to get our music out there. Right. I but, got a story to share, but go on. But, you know, to hear our song on the radio, is yeah. like, it's, it's just something totally different. And even to this day, and you're right, you hit it, because even artists that are big YouTube stars, you yeah. know what I'm saying, and, and, and whatnot, independent, yeah. they still believe, a lot of them do, I'm not saying all of them, still believe that you haven't made it until you hear your song on the radio. Because I go, bro, you're making, you have this big following. Like, you got millions, this yeah. and that, or whatever. But it's like, yeah, man, but I want to hear my song on the radio right. still. Like, you know, like you said, they, st they still get that vibe. Right. You have to. Because I remember for me, when I first heard it, I was rolling in the car or where, I don't know where I was. Had it been. And, and when I heard it, I was like, I realized, damn, there's thousands, thousands of people listening to my song right yeah. now. And it was just that, you know, you get that goosebump feeling, man. Yeah. Like, man, you just want to hear it again. You want to hear it again. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. part of our paying our dues was traveling and doing promotional tours. Right. You know, uh, a lot of people don't understand that promotional tours was we weren't getting paid, but we were on a tour where we were promoting ourselves. Right. And to be able to go to a different state or a different city and people knew it was just from the radio. Right. You know, or maybe our picture from the single right. or whatnot. It helped, too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Because, I mean, we would, uh, radio would play our songs. We'd fly in. We'd do the show. We'd get paid. We'd do our thing. Then we'd leave. We had it, um, I'm not going to say, I'm going to say we were fortunate enough to have a record label who put money into us. And, you know, at the end of the day, it was, we put out good music. So right. the radio w was able to uh, identify with it as, you know, household. You know, right. we were a household name. You know yeah. what I mean? Sunday afternoon, Latin actor. We were safe Yeah, is what they called it. So it's like, okay, we could play this. And we were fortunate enough to be able to go tour, like I said, and go to these places. Never really big on merchandise at the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? We didn't get that. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing cats like MC Magic, you know, uh, out there hustling. You know what I'm saying? Um, his cassettes, his, his vinyl, doing it on stage. And we would give out cassettes, but they were the record labels that would give us this. Like, oh, all right, you know. But he, I'm, I, I'm sure he pressed up all his stuff and he would just, yeah. you know, with his own money. And then you'd see him and, um, you know, at the tent selling his merchandise. Yeah. And well, we, 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 we get our, you know, we get our money from the show and we bounce. Because <laughs> we were making good money. Right. But now I kick myself in the ass because I go, can you imagine now? Right. You know, or back then, if I was selling merch afterwards, and I didn't get that game. It was, I'm telling you, Tony, it was just moving so fast. We were going city, city, city like that. So I got respect for those that, that you know, grinded like that and still do. Yeah. And, I mean, now I'm even, you know, merch is where it's at, bro. Like, and, and the fans love it. They want it. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So, TJ Yes. Right, go ahead. Oh, you can... <laughs> go ahead, bro. Say it again. Go ahead. Say it. ShopLSOB.com. Check this out. We just dropped this one right here. It's me and Bobby. Who can guess what video this is from? Type them in the chat right now. You already know this is the, uh, you know, rest in peace one right here, man. LSOB.com. There it is. So, Shop LSOB.com. So now um, you guys dropped TJ Knights. What was yeah. your next single? Uh, Latin Active. Latin Active. Now, speaking of Latin Active, how did you guys come to meet Shiro? Okay. So we were in the studio. And it's crazy because I don't remember her singing on Latin Active, but I do remember the Sunday afternoon. Because mm -hmm. I remember uh, when we packaged up Brown and Proud, which is the first album, that original release, 
had two different versions of Latin Active and Sunday Afternoon. Really? Latin Active, uh, Shara was on the original version. She was. I, I, again, I don't remember this, that, that story. of. I don't think I was there while she, while she sung on it. I just remember uh, hearing it um, when it was done, completed, and mixed. But Sunday Afternoon, I remember uh, we had to go in the studio because radio loved the song. But it had no chorus. Shout out to the diehards too, man. They had the original cassette, Brown and Proud. There was no chorus. It was just the oldie. Do, 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 do. Yeah. do on a Sunday afternoon. Do, like blank. Wow. So, yeah. So then we went in the studio with Jam and James. And uh, we were sitting there. We're like, man, the record label's there. And our guys there. It's like, dude, we need... We need a chorus. We need something catchy. Like all these rap songs, you know, they got choruses on them. So we got to come with something. So then James was like, man, I, I know this. My cousin, she sings. I said, well, you know, get her on in here. So he called her up and, and Shiro I said, hey, you want to come down? Well, I'm here with Lottie Shade of Brown. We're recording a song and, and you come down. She was okay. So she, she came down and I remember... Uh, I wasn't there <laughs> when she was singing it, but I, I, I was there when he was mixing it. And I remember Mellow Man, Mello came with me to the studio that day. And we were, I forgot what studio, I think it was Larrabee, one of the Larrabee's yeah. north or south up there in Hollywood. And we were just chilling and, um, upstairs and I just heard the mix being made and I heard that voice. And Shira was, we were chilling in the fun. I was like, wow. And then they replayed the oldie, put the bass over the oldie bass. They put the guitar over the guitar. You know, they played over the sample. Now it's starting to sound like a different song, like a, a, a real song. Right. You actually feel it. Because remember, the oldies, they, you couldn't really, the, the sounds were left, right, panned. You know what I'm saying? The bass lines. But when you put that bass on there, you know, and man, it just really stood out. And then we had, a, I remember... Um, what's his name? Rocky Padilla. Danny's his brother came in. He played saxophone on Sunday afternoon. Oh, really? You didn't know that. So shout out to Rocky and your brother. Rest in peace. Came in, put out of the sax to it with Shiro. Man, it was a wrap. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I need to ask you about somebody that people have been dying to for me to ask you about because uh, one of my first shows that I did. I want to say it was either Tempe or Mesa, a Johnny Lazoya car show. Yeah, <laughs> Johnny. Okay, and uh, AZ. And uh, we performed with you guys. I want to say it was 1991, and I still <laughs> may even have the flyer because I hoard everything, bro. Yeah. And uh, Teardrop was there. Yep. That's when I met her. Okay, you guys did Latin Active, and mm -hmm. she rapped. Mm -hmm. Now, people want to know, how did you guys come to meet her, and what happened to her? You know? That's a good question because I get that asked a lot. Um, we uh, were introduced to Teardrop through uh, our boy Chulo. Shout out to Chulo Beto. He was on our first album as well. Uh, he rapped on the Brown and Proud uh, single. Um, and his girlfriend at the time was Denise Teardrop. Oh, okay. So um, I think our manager, because he had this whole vision for our album, which is crazy. I got to get, he was black, by the way. Yeah. You know, put together this Chicano segment based album you know what i'm saying yeah. and it was just amazing how he laid it out for us um anyway going back to teardrop he was like uh yeah well let's let's get teardrop you know your girl she could rap we need a female on this you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying latin active we got shiro but but let, let, let's put a female and i think i want to say one of the songs that was out um there is a song i think we got the idea from another song there was a female rapping with two guys and um, it was before Fuji's, it was before uh, it was some group. And it was just the, the idea to have a female voice in there. So she, we put her in there. I think uh, Chudo wrote her verse. She went in there, she spit her verse, and it just came together, man. Bobby was first. I was, you know, she was the middle, and I was the last one. Yeah. And um, that, that was it. As far as um, future music, I mean, she toured with us, like you said. Yeah. She came with us maybe for the first leg, and I'm saying like maybe even the first six months or something like yeah. that, you know. And then she just kind of, um, you know, went went her separate ways for whatever reason. Um, and that's it. We just kept doing our thing. We didn't connect with her until years later, until uh, you know, Bobby and I eventually we, we started talking back in 2016, okay, 2015, okay, again. And uh, we ended up doing, I'm sorry, no, 90, 98, we relinked up with her. 
So that was 90, 91, and we relinked up with her. We did an album with Greenside Records in 90, 97, and she rapped on another song with us called They Can't Stand It, which we also brought Shiro back. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was there for the release party that you guys had in Hollywood. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was that was dope, man. That was a great feeling just to be back on stage, man. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so from 2020, when's the last time you've actually seen her or heard of her? Um, was uh, 2016. Okay. Uh, we we did a comeback show. We hooked up with uh, Lou, Lou Pizarro, um, mm -hmm. Operation Repo, man. You know him best from that, that TV show where they go repo. To, uh, mm, right. Big Mexican dude. He's not big anymore, but him and uh, his brother that was bald, his his homie, his sister does it now. But anyway, long story short, he's you know producer, and we met him backstage. Uh, D Double T X and I, you know, we had just got we relinked after so many years, and our first show was the Art LeBeau show. It was in 2015. So there is where we met Lou. Lou was backstage. Hey man, I'm a big fan of you guys. Um, I really see myself doing something with you. You know what I mean? As far as uh, creating some type of show, we got we got to do a show on your story, man. Sunday afternoon was was huge. Yes, you guys are you know predominantly one of the groundbreakers for Chicano rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's got to be a story on you. And we were like, let's get it. You know what I mean? And uh, right. So we had started filming, um, um, you know, some uh, some footage. He would come on the road with us. We'd do shows. They'd come, whole camera crew, whatnot, and just filming this whole reality show type TV thing, right? Well, we had a plan to do this comeback show, reunion show, as they called it, Light of Shade mm -hmm. Reunion, and uh, I think it was uh, SGV. It was at this, 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 this uh, comedy spot, and it was a comedy show slash uh, rap show. Um, it was uh, hosted by, uh, let's see, uh, Ru okay, Gilbert Escavel, a comedian, because mm -hmm. we were working with his brother Rudy and um, a couple of others. Um, uh, everybody started showing up. Um, what did he say? What's his name? Emilio, Emilio uh, Rivera? Yes, yes, yes. That's yeah. the way do he was showing. Like, all the OGs would come out. And then um, Denise, Teardrop, she actually agreed to come rehearse with us for that show because we were playing with the live band. Oh, we were cool. playing with Rocky Padilla. And his band, he had a band. And also DJ Pinky was DJing for us. Rest oh, in peace, okay. DJ yeah. Pinky. Rest in peace. So uh, long story short, that's when I had seen her in 2016. That's when that took place. I haven't seen her since. And I was at, man, we've been on, we've been doing shows on the road. Uh, I've been reaching, trying to reach out to her. And uh, I think she's just in a place where she's just good. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, think it's not for everybody, this right. whole limelight thing. Right. And uh, but damn man, what a verse she had, yeah. and that verse goes her voice too, into bro. Her history, voice. bro. Now, now let me ask you something that I think is very interesting. At that time, was there any other Chicanas out there uh, rapping that you could remember? Because we're talking about 1990, 91. 91. Not that I can think of off yeah. top. That had a record out, except later on, um, JB Neighborhood JB, Queen. Yeah, yeah. JB was another one that I was working with. Uh, on 98, 99, and long story, but that, that album deal never went through. I still mm. have songs that are unreleased that I did with her. Really? Yeah. Put them out. She's yeah. got a fan base. In fact, they're looking for her like they're looking for Tear. I know. <laughs> I know. As a <laughs> like, matter of fact, where are they? <laughs> you know what? I hope she's probably watching or somebody sends this to her. Yeah. But I had one of my boys recently, well, I should say earlier this year, go reach out to her because he lives a little bit closer to her than I do. Right. And uh, she just was not interested in. There you, you know, go. So. I get it, man. It's it's a crazy it's a crazy game. You know, man. as as much as us as not only being friends but also as fans of what they do, we want to see them. Sure. But it's up ultimately up to them. Yeah. You yeah. Know? But uh, check this out. We're gonna go ahead and take a break. When we come back, uh, I got some more interesting questions I want to ask you about, and uh, I think people are gonna be excited about what's coming next. So I'm excited. I'm me, on Tony. Yeah, I'm with Rodeo and Radio, baby. Absolutely. Yeah. And look, once again, call somebody, take somebody, slap, shut up somebody, let them know that ODM is in the motherfucking building. We'll be back 10 minutes. Go get something to drink. Okay? Don't fuck around. Come back.
up, it's Bella. I'm here on Rodium Radio with my boy Tony A. The Wizard. Stay tuned. Yo, it's Ray Monique on Rodium Radio with Tony A. The motherfucking Wizard. Tune in and subscribe. What's going down, everybody? This is Big Rich G here at Rodium Radio with Tony A. You guys got to check this out, man. Don't miss out. Tune in. It's your boy, Producer A. here at Rodium Radio. It's your boy, Tony A. Make sure y'all subscribe every Sunday, Wednesday, 7 p.m. with the dopest podcast popping in the motherfucking West Coast. Make sure y'all subscribe. Peace. Yeah, this is Pablito here at Rhodium Radio. I'm here with Tony A, the wizard. Tune in. What's cracking? It's your boy Noel G in the house, a.k.a. Hector. You guys know what time it is right here with the Rhodium Radio Show, hosted by your boy, Tony A, the wizard. <laughs> Keep listening. We got something good for you. What's good, beautiful ladies? It's your boy, MC Magic. Tony A, the wizard, you already know. Rhodium Radio Show, turn it up. Yo, what's hood good with y'all? This your boy, Big Prodigy, from the legendary South Central Cartel. And I'm over here chilling with my homeboy, Tony A, the wizard, on the Rhodium Radio Show. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe to the page on YouTube. And by the way, check out that interview with yours truly. You dig? Wes. What's up, guys? This is my little. You're watching Royal Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Little Silent from BOTG, the voice of the ghetto man. Tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rodeon Radio. You already know, hosted by the legend himself, Tony A, the Wizard, man. Don't miss out, man. That should be active out here. What's up, everyone? This is Antonio Palayo. I'm here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to subscribe. Yo, what's up, everybody? L.A. Baseball Head here, also known as L.A.F.C. Soccer Head, chilling on Rhodium Radio with my homeboy, Tony A. the Wizard. What it do? DJ Joe Cooley. You chilling with me, DJ Tony A. the Wizard, and Rhodium Radio. You heard me? What up, everyone? This is Solita. Tune in to Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. the Wizard. What up, what up? Susie Q in the motherfucking building. I'm here chilling with Tony A. the motherfucking wizard. Rhodium Radio, YouTube. You guys check it out. Subscribe. Thank it easy. Yo, this is Shady Boy right here with Tony A. the wizard on Rhodium Radio. What's poppin' with it, family? It's your boy Jokes Loves Life. And you are now tuned in to Rhodium Radio with the one and only Tony Ye, the motherfucking wizard. That's right, love life, y'all. It's your boy, We Throw Trees. Rhodium Radio in the house. Tony A, the wizard, what's up? What's up, this is your boy Panther on Rhodium Radio. Tune in with your boy, Tony A, the wizard. And make sure you hit that subscribe button. Yeah, yeah. This is Murray Brumfield, AKA Mexicali Slim, Familia Records. And you rolling with Rhodium Radio with Tony A. Yo, what up? It's your boy DJ Kazelma right here live. Rodeo on radio with my boy, Tony the Wizard. That's what's up. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Mariah Avila. I'm here on Rodeo Radio with Tony the Wizard. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Yo, it's crack, and it's your homeboy, Mr. Motherfucking Junebug. And you just tuned in to Rodeo Radio with Tony A the Motherfucking Wizard. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel. You know. Juvalet Rasa, it's your homeboy, Hypnotic. Right here in Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Make sure you subscribe, like, and do all that. Don't forget to comment. Much love. Yo, 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 this is Grinch O'Brown on Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Keeping this shit popping. All West Coast, all love. Shout out to my raza. We getting it. Hey, look, this is Chunks, the San Diego All Star. You are now tuned in to Rhodium Radio right here with Tony A, the wizard. Tap in. Oh, man, we right here live on the Rhodium Radio with the homie Tony A. Royal T, low profile records. Oh man. What's up? It's your girl Carolyn Rodriguez here at Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Sunday to Tony A the Wizard. What's up, y'all? This is DJ Tony G. You're listening to Rhodium Radio with your homeboy, Tony A the Wizard. Rhodium Radio. Yo, what's cracking? It's Two Max of Mexican descent, visionary shapeshifters, good life project blowed, LA underground hip hop. You're tuned in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard on Wednesdays and Sundays. L.A. hip-hop will save the world. Ooh-ooh. All right, what up? It's your boy King Cash right here at Rhodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe. Yo, what up? It's your boy Trouble P. 
here at Rodeo Radio with your boy Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in. West Coast. Yo, 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 yo. What it do? This your boy, Big Havoc. One hood, Admiral. South Central Cartel, General. And you're tuned in to Rodeo Radio with my boy, Tony A. The Wizard. Stay locked in. Hello everybody, this is Rocky Fadiga, and you're listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Hey, what's up, what's up my people, hey, Trouble Kid right here, you know, in the house. Shout out to Tony A, the Wizard, and shout out Rhodium Radio, much love, thank you for having me. What up world, it's YQ, Young Quicks, and right now you're listening to the OG, Tony A, the Wizard, on Rhodium Radio. Make sure to keep it locked, subscribe, comment, hate, it don't matter man, we getting to it, it'll five stand up. Hey yo, what up, it's your boy Mark Cruz, you're now tuned in to Rodium Radio, with Tony A, the wizard, the legend, tap in. What's happening everybody, it's your boy Queenie, you're tuned in to Rodium Radio, check my man Tony A, the wizard, every Wednesday and Sunday, stay tuned, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, you know what it is. What's up, Pimpin? It's your boy, Johnny Boy, a.k.a. Mr. Las Vegas, at Rhodium Radio with your boy, Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, catch us every Wednesday and Sunday. Yeah. Hey, y'all. This is Elia Cadena here at Rhodium Radio with motherfucking Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, and share. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Sarah S. I'm here live at Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and tap in on Wednesday and Sunday evenings. One love. Can I get a moment of your time? Hey, it's your boy Lucky Sun Zoo from Hood Stark's podcast. Hey, fuck with one of the best podcasts in the game. Tony A. The Wizard. Rhodium Radio. Don't motherfucking play with it. Don't sleep on it. Hey, H.A., stand the fuck up. Yes, sir. What's up? This is Clever from the Brown Side. Make sure you guys tune in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. If not, you're a bitch. What's cracking? It's your boy, Young Thrive, right here with the homie Tony A. The Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Don't forget to subscribe, man. Check out the best interviews on the West Coast. Yeah. Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this biatch. Lonzo, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You sure? Motherfucker, I'm ready, goddamn!
Hey, Tony, drop that. What face? I bet. My name is the Croft, the C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D, the poet high C. Tony A, the wizard, just as cool as a lizard. Picking out a turn, stabbing pussy like a lizard. Oh, so sorry, homie, I didn't mean to say that. Steve is in the house. Come on, won't you play that funky dope beat? You know you gotta throw me some stylish ass crop coming straight from the rodeo. You are now about to witness Tony A. Get funky. I still like Steve. Welcome back, everybody, to Rodian Radio, episode 98, and I'm not going to waste any time, so we're going to go ahead and jump right back into it with ODM of Lighter Shader Brown. So once again, brother, it's a pleasure for you to be here. I want to thank you once again. Um, you're just not only bringing me back, but also the public back down memory lane, and we're learning things and seeing things that we possibly didn't know before. Mm-hmm. Like my next question, mm-hmm. a lot of people may not know, or some people may know, that at one point in your career, you actually met Selena. Uh, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Can, so, can you share with us <laughs> how that came about? So we, uh, yeah, we we got offered to do this um, to do a Coca Cola commercial, and um, it was in Spanish and English. And uh-huh. they they had uh, explained to us who you know was going to be down with it, the whole commercial. And they said it was uh, it was Coral freestyle singer Coral. Um, I think Timmy T was supposed to be a part of that. I'm not sure if he made it or, or not. Um, I, I don't even remember. I know there's a video floating around the commercial itself. Lizette Melendez mm-hmm. um, and Selena. Okay. And I was like, wow, like homegirls, man, she's hella cool. Like she's beautiful. Like I can't believe we're going we're gonna to meet Selena. You know what I'm saying? I was like, all right, bet. So I remember um, we got introduced to her. We all had recorded, went inside the recording studio. We did our parts, obviously, separate. And um, I just remember recording the song, and I would hear her voice, and, like, we came on after her, and it was like, whoa, man, we're coming up after her. And um, so we recorded the song, and then we ended up shooting the video uh, a few weeks later, and I remember it was upstairs, the, uh, the, the, the studio where we were recording the video, and uh, we had to get in this elevator. So we go out in, me and Bobby, you know, we went inside the elevator and then all of a sudden there's three people walking and it was Selena, her sister, and uh, her brother, A.B. And and uh, so like, is there room? Is there room, y'all? I was like, yeah, there's room. Come on in, man. Come on in. I was like, hey, man, nice to meet you. Like we met Selena in an elevator. You know what I mean? Like how crazy is that? So we're going up to the floor and um, we're just sitting there and there's like, hey, y'all, like, you know, she had that southern accent. Man, I love y'all music. All oh, that Sunday afternoon, it'd be hitting in Corpus, you know, and, you know, because she's from Corpus Christi. And, and she was, I was just like, man, she was so sweet. And um, I remember her sister was, was a little quiet. AB was cool, but she was just like the, the biggest sweetheart ever. Like, you, yeah. you know, her, just as you envision her, that's the way she was in person. And, you know, yeah, man, I'm really happy, excited. Y- y'all excited to do this? And, oh, man, this is awesome. And, you know, okay, guys, and we got to the door, and then, boom, she went her way. And she went, and I think she did her scene first. Okay. Because we were doing gr- some green sc- green screen stuff. And so we were just sitting there watching her, and she was dancing, doing her moves and singing. And, and we went up. We were next. And I hadn't seen her after that probably maybe a couple more weeks later actually probably a couple months later but uh we linked up again we did the show at disneyland and it was with her and it was a coca-cola thing and coca-cola classic and they had us out there performing it was just a uh, lighter shade of brown selena and uh, i think daisy fuentes remember the old video mm-hmm. jock she she was out there uh, hosting it and um, there it is. We saw our backstage again, and and we were just like getting some grub. We were at like a buffet, you know. They feed you backstage, and yeah, man, we were just chopping up. Hey guys, here we are again. You know, we took pictures, and I have no idea where those damn pictures went. <laughs> Story of my life, man. 
I got a Pac story and an Easy East story to share with you too, as far as uh, you know, memorabilia. But yeah, I mean, um, it was just she was a sweetheart, man. That's all right. I can say. You know, um, where where did you guys record that song at, and where did you guys shoot the video? Was it the same? Because I heard you say it was upstairs. I, I well, no, the uh, the place we shot the video okay. was upstairs. That was later after we recorded the song. Okay. The the song was like uh, recorded in a studio somewhere in L.A. Oh, okay, so yeah. here, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and in the video, same thing out here? Yeah, everything was in L.A., based okay. in L.A. and this Disneyland, not Disney World? This Disneyland, yeah, yeah, okay. not Disney World. Okay. Yeah, everything was here, so yeah. Okay, that's dope, man. That's dope you guys had a chance to meet her. Yeah. Uh, what year was this? Ooh, let's see, we had out uh, Sunday afternoon, so 92. Wow. Yeah, somebody out there probably has the video, but right. I mean, it. like I said, it, it, it literally, they tag me all the time on it, and it's really cool to hear it, And um, but yeah, it was 92. Wow, and, and oh wow, and at the same time uh, to have met you know a legend like her, who you know may she rest in peace now. Yeah. You know, it, it just saddened everyone when that happened. You know what I'm saying? When her her passing away. But you mentioned uh, Easy E and Pac. You want yeah. to care to share those? <laughs> so when I was 13, I was living in uh, like I said Orange County. I we used to we used to go up to Knott's Berry Farm. Mm -hmm. They remember they used to have a Studio K, mm -hmm. and everybody go out there and pop. I mean, I saw everywhere from Ozone Turbo there. You never know who you were gonna see. Right. It was the happening spot. So we were there one one weekend, and I was there chilling. I look over, and I see Easy E walk in with his two bodyguards, the big Samoans, right. one and two. Right. And uh, they're, they're just sitting there. Excuse me, I think there were Samoans, because I want to get that twisted, you know what I'm saying? Because Tongans are like, oh, I'm not Samoans. But anyway, they were chilling, and uh, he was just checking out the scene, whatnot, and I was like, man, that's easy E. And I had my hat on, and it was a hat that I got from the Sloss and Swap Me. Remember, they used to put the names on the side, right? Right. With the old school, uh, the starter caps, I think it was, the snapbacks. and. Um, so I, I walked over to him. I said, yo, E, what's up, dude? Hey, man, here I'm 13 years old. Hey, man, I'm a fan. Can you sign my hat? And he looked at me and he goes, hey, hey, man. He goes, yeah, man. He goes, I'm, I'm just chilling right now. He goes, but, but I'll get to it. And I was like, all right. So I go back into my corner. I'm just all there. All <laughs> in creeper status is watching him. I didn't care what the hell was going on. I'm just sitting there watching him. And uh, boom, I see him just bounce with his bodyguards. Like they just left. Right. And I was like, I think I was on the other side of the crowd. It was super packed. I couldn't make my way out. I was like, damn. So about an hour later, like we're walking around um, Knott's Berry Farm and we're over by the log ride. And I see uh, Easy E walking with his with his wife and um, his kids. Right. And he had like, he had won a bunch of stuffed animals, whatever. And he was carrying them, right? And then he goes, uh, I, I saw him. I go, hey, man, I go, there he is. I told my homie. I go, should I hit him up? Should I hit him up? Like, I don't want to book. Like, fool, hit him up. I was like, yo, E. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, you said you are going to sign my hat. What's up, dude? And he goes, he looks at me. He looks at his wife. He takes his stuffed animals. He says, here, he gives them to his wife. He says, hold this. And he puts them right there on the, on the car seat or, or the, the stroller. Right. He comes over to me, sits down, takes my hat. And I didn't have a Sharpie. I had a pen. That's all I had. So you know when you sign autographs with the, because I know you sign a lot of autographs, Tony. You? <laughs> you have to when you sign with a pen. You got to go over it because right. you can't see it sometimes. Right. So he sit, sat there and wrote his name. Said to Robert. Easy motherfucking E. But it took him like five minutes because he had a trace over it. So he took that time, and that memory I'll never forget, bro. Yeah. And the moral of the story is, I don't know where that hat's at today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shoot me right now. And I had a similar story with Tupac. Okay. And I'm going to tell you that right now. So, 1994, we're uh, up north. We're doing a show. Might have been 93, 93, 93. It's with, uh, this lineup was sick, man. It was Chub Rock, Salt and Pepper, Pete Rock, CL Smooth, Tribe Call, Quest. You name it was there. Hip Hop was there. That's when they did the big summer jams, right? Yeah. All on the West Coast. The Far Side, Gangstar Guru, uh, Guru was there. And it was me and D, Bobby. We were in a circle. So you have Fat Lip right here and uh, um, uh, Gangstar Guru, um, Bobby, and myself. And Pac's on stage. He's wrapping up the show. And he's playing with a live band. He just dropped Poetic Justice, right? Okay. So we're chilling. We're hanging out. We're just shooting it up, you know, 
I'm shooting the shit, just talking, man. And the next thing you know, Pac gets off stage. And he does his thing. I don't know. He goes in the back, whatever. You know, he comes back out. And we're just like there on the side of the stage. He walks over, has his hat to the side, you know, back. And he's like, yo, what's up? Where the weed at? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and Bobby was a smoker. Like, I, I didn't touch it. Like, he, you know, Bobby got high often. So Bobby reaches in his pocket and he pulls out one of those old, uh, remember the the films when you would take pictures and then you oh, yeah. get it developed and they come in the little black the little tubes, right? Yeah. And the film strips would be in there. Well, Bobby had it packed with weed. You know what I mean? So he opened it up. And Pac, there you go. I got some right here, Bobby said, you know. And Pac was like, oh, man, that's, that's right, little homie. And, you know, gave Bobby some love. He's like, yeah, I fuck with some, I fuck with some lighter shade of brown, man, and blah, blah, blah. Hella cool, bro. So I was like, man, I had a Poetic Justice hat on. So I took my hat off. I said, yo, Pac, hey, man, just sign this real quick, man. Like, try to be all cool because, you know, we was on the same stage as Pac. <laughs> so he, uh, he signed it. And I don't know where that hat's at today, bro. That's why I come in here, bro. I go, man, like, you have all your shit from back in the day. Like, yeah. I didn't save it. Like, honestly, I probably gave it away. Like, there's shit that I would just, I wouldn't hold on to. Like, our music, I wouldn't hold on to it. I, right. I would give you my last cassette yeah. and not even think about myself. Right. You know what I mean? Because I want, you know. Uh, I was like that in the very beginning, but after a while, I was like, screw that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I started keeping everything because I used to have boxes and boxes of my mixtapes. My homies used to come over, can I borrow this one? Yeah, bring it back. Never brought it back. Right, course, right. But you um, quick, yeah. That was one of the questions I was going to ask you. Did, you. did you have any pictures? But you said you don't know what. We got going. some, thanks to mom. I know you and I okay. were talking off air that, you know, your mom's had a lot of your stuff as yeah. well. And so did my mom. So she would, the stuff that she did, and matter of fact, I just got it back like two years ago. She was like, here, I'm moving. Do you want this? I said, yeah, I got a son now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's going to appreciate this. So let me do it for him at least. And, you know. So I was going through it. I had like old stuff from like 92, 93, my solo stuff. There's pictures of me and Bobby. I got hip hop locals, posters, you know, a stack of those. She would say, save a stack, like of all of them. Right, right. So there's right. some, eight, you know, a couple, few 8x10s in there from like our old photo shoots, uh, cassettes. I got vinyl uh, of, uh, you know, our singles and whatnot. But right. yeah, there's some stuff. You know, like um, um, maybe you already have this idea. If not, allow me to share this. You have posters, you have glossies or pictures or whatever. Right. You ever think about reprinting up your glossies or your posters and just selling them to the fans again? That's a great idea. And I know there's cats out there, man. They be making money. Like, somebody's got it. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I know there's somebody who works at our old record label that ended up with a stack of those and selling them on eBay, bro. Oh, okay. Because you go to eBay, you see them. I had to buy my own 8 by 10 just to put it on a shirt. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And they were slacking it for like... Uh, the homie Tony bought it. Actually. It was like twenty, like thirty bucks, twenty five bucks or something for eight by ten. Wow! So then I ended up buying another one. Yeah, to sent to my house. You had to buy your own. You had to buy my own. Yeah, my own eight by ten. My mom, she kept like ten glosses of our first one. She kept like maybe eight glosses of the second one. So I still have all my original glosses. Nice. Uh, my original Source magazine when I came out on it. Uh, um, rap pages. <sighs> Like she kept everything. Right. You know. I have all the lowrider magazines. <laughs> okay. Believe it or not, I used to stash those. That was one thing that I stashed. If any, in the magazine. So, okay, so let's go back a little bit. Something that I want to know: El Barrio, uh, uh, Latin Active, and if I'm correct, Sunday Afternoon Drops. Uh, correct in that order. Okay, yeah. now, did Sunday Afternoon? I already know the answer, but I want you to share. Did it take off immediately? Uh, it did. Okay. It did immediately as far as West Coast because, see, they were already pumped by Latin Active and TJ Knights. Right. And when I mean West Coast, I mean the Southwest, you know, yeah. Califas, Nevada, New Mexico. Shout out to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Texas and all that whole lowrider circuit as we were right. talking about. Because we were already doing shows. So they knew it was coming. If you had the album, like, you know how you get an album and you go, damn, that's the next one. Right. That's a single. Like, everybody knew about it who were fans of our group. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when it dropped... And the new version came out because, as I mentioned, the original package was with a different remix. Right, right. And then we released the second one, uh, and then we started doing, you know, promo tours for that. Yeah, bro, it just blew up. Radio just immediately. I think radio picked it because you know radio likes to pick your, right. your singles. At least they did back then. Yeah, and that song was so hot. I remember, um, I think it was me and Crawford High C. We were trying to make it to your video show at a, a punk leg leg. Right, so, right, right, right. Yeah. You guys started, and we were trying to hurry up and get out there because we were working. But we didn't get a chance to make it out there. But I know Punk Rick Mello was there. And I think Daza was even in the... Daza was there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mello was there. I just did a survey. Uh, 
little trivia question the other day on Instagram. I was like, who's this? Where's the Cubano at in this picture? It was a pic screenshot of Melo. It was turned right here. And a lot of people got it, man. It was yeah. like, like, yeah. And uh, so now, did um, how, how far would you say that that first album, how far did it take you? Did, did you guys travel overseas at all? You know, uh, or was it pretty much just all in the United States at, at the time? We didn't go overseas until, our th I think, our third album. Okay. Which was uh, Laying in the Cut. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was it was mainly here um, in the United States. We did a bunch of grip gripper shows, low rider shows, you name it. Um, but uh, we uh, got offered to do Lollapalooza. Really? Yeah. And I see your face went like that because to get on Lollapalooza, you had to be hand chosen. Exactly. Right. And we were hyped, bro. And this was like the Midwest tour uh, yes. lake of it. It was like out there in Chicago or something. Or So we got offered to do it. But the record label had to fund it. Like you had to take care of your own room and yeah. board. Yeah. They didn't want to do that. So at that point, we, we knew that we were growing. We, were, we had outgrown the label, so to speak. Right. Our music was just taken. I was like, yo, like, we're, come on, man. Like, we're, we're selling records. You got to keep up with us. Like, really? You're not going to put it? This could be our biggest uh, turning point in our career. Right. This Lollapalooza tour. Lollapalooza is like, to me, it reminds me of uh, Coachella, so like to speak. Coachella, yeah. Right? Um, but yeah, so there's where we ended up parting ways with the label, like maybe a few months later. And oh, then shit. there's where we ended up uh, signing with a, um, the Mercury Records. We, we, we got, you know, got a whole new management and we hooked up with DJP. You remember DJP? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Warren G. Warren and that West Coast Def Jam. He was running that label for a minute. And they had Warren. He had Coolio on his management yeah. team. He was managing Warren, Coolio, South Central Cartel. No, South Central Cartel was on, uh, was on quality. But he had that Montel Jordan. Mm -hmm. So all these cats. And then he, you know, he started managing us. Then he ended up getting us a record deal at Mercury in 94. Mm -hmm. And we did that album there. And that's where we dropped Hey DJ. Well, as soon as we dropped Hey DJ, that thing took off, I think, bigger in overseas, which brings me back to your question. Yeah. In, in Japan and London. And I, you know, I just remember doing interviews. Like, it was blowing up. Like, it was number one on the charts for, like, weeks. You know what I'm saying? Over fucking huge, Joe to bro. see Boys to Men. Like, you know, like, we were killing the game yeah. with Hey DJ. Now, now, going to Japan and going to Europe uh, and being, you know, Mexican kids from the neighborhood, bro, uh, what did that mean? How did they, how did you feel about that? I mean, knowing that, like, fuck, I'm just out here rapping and doing shit that I love. Right. And I'm out here, you know, fucking rapping yeah. around me here, you know? <laughs> I'm out here, yeah. <laughs> On Thanksgiving, like, you know, when I'm used to being home with my family, I, I remember that because that, like, you know, it pulls you away from your family, bro, yeah. and when you're touring, but this is the, you know, what I signed up for. This is what I wanted to do. It was my passion. So being out there overseas, it was dope just experiencing new places, you know? Granted, you didn't, like, spend too much because right. it was, boom, in one night, out the next. Maybe you get a couple nights or a couple days right. of chill afterwards or before. But, like, when we went to Japan, that was, like, a whole week. So we right. went, uh, this was 94, we went out there, we did Tokyo, and then uh, we take one of them trains, and then we go to, like, Kobe, and then Yokohama, and it was just, like, boom, boom, boom. But it, it was it was a crazy experience, man, for sure. Now, performing over there, what was the response? <laughs> So, if you don't know this or not, uh, but, like, Japan, they really, man, they really embraced the Latino culture. And, like, just, just the whole lowrider scene, Chicano music, everything about it. Knight the Funkster, man, he did this. He's from Japan. Like, the artista. So, he, bro, when we went out there, it was like, bro, they look straight up gangster. Yeah. Like, cholos, like, man, the mat, you know, the doggers on, everything, you know what I'm saying? The white beaters, whatever. I thought they were Chicano. I was like, hey, take off your glasses, homie. Yeah. Well, you know, ch chinito. But I was like, hey, <laughs> I really did. Bro. That's a true story. I was like, man, this is crazy. And then I remember the Lowrider magazines. They, you know how we open up. See, I'm confused. You open a magazine now, you go this way, right? Right. Theirs right. was this way. The opposite way. So okay. you, would, you would read them this way. And it was just... Uh, it was a different experience, but they're low. I mean, same low rider scene out there and everything else. Yeah. And they appreciated us. And I remember when we toured, we did the song "Hey DJ." It was a huge. That's all they knew was "Hey DJ." Okay. So we had to perform that song, and we had to perform a whole hour. Wow. And in that set, we did "Hey DJ" maybe three times because no <laughs> we didn't have enough music. Like you know what I'm saying? Like wow. they were like again, again. I was like, all right, run it back. Hey DJ. Like they wanted to hear that. You just see them. 
like they didn't know the lyrics, but you could just see him like, you know, doing this. It was it was a trip, trip man. That shit is dope, man. Yeah, that shit is dope. You know, okay. Uh, me and High C, we get booked to go to um, uh, Europe. We're gonna be t up there ten days. Dope. I was working on music here, and I asked, "Well, how long is the flight?" Because I I, I was like Richard Valens, bro. I didn't want to I didn't want to fly. <laughs> Much respect to you. Richard Valens, bro. Yeah. May rest in peace. But I just did not want to fly. So he said, 13 hours, fuck that, I ain't going. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, they smoking in the bag too. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, I, yeah. I was like, I ain't going. So he went, he came back, goes, oh, you fucked up, should have went. So they booked us to go to Japan another 10 days. How long is the flight? He told me, oh, fuck that, I ain't going. Right. I always thought that those opportunities will come back around. Got you. And they never did, bro. Right. You know, and then we got booked to go to Canada, Australia. And you know, they pay double over there, sometimes triple. See, I wish I knew that. Then. <laughs> but, but, but I was like, Steve would call me, hey, man, they want you to go to Japan. I was like, how long How long is the flight over there? Ah, oh, come on, tell me. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to go, dude. I'm not going to go. You just I, fear of flight. Right? Yes, bro. Yeah. Yes. You know, I mean, when you see the fucking wings going like this, bro. Yeah. Now, hey, especially on those little, like you said, the little prop planes. Yeah, I'm like, we're going on those, bro. Sir Mix a lot, remember him? He, yeah. He never. He, he, I remember it. Someone told me he never flew, like he just drove everywhere. Yeah. I think. I want to say Candyman's the same way. <laughs> I'm not mistaken. Dude, one time we're, we're flying back. I forgot where we were from, and this was in turbulence where it's going up and down. It was side to side, like. Like and I got so mad and I go, would you fucking stop? <laughs> like I yelled it out. I got so angry. Keep the plane in the lane. <laughs> yeah, bro. I was. That motherfucker was going for about an hour, bro. And I was like, shit. You know, when you see the stewardess hanging on for their life. Right, right, right. So everything's gonna be okay. Yeah. I remember Bobby and I. We we flew a plane in Hawaii, one of those prop planes. We were going from like um, Oahu. We did a show, a couple shows out there, to another island, to, to the main island. And it, we took one of those little small planes, mm -hmm. and the pilot was like, "Yeah, I want to fly the plane." And Bobby's like, "I will." See, and give me, let me see. You know, it's no like, shit. I'm like, "Ooh, you high for starters?" Like, "Yeah, I do. Come on." So boom. So we, we're just, yeah, we, mid air, bro, way up there, and it's beautiful. Then he turns the lights off, like the headlight, the, the the lights, and I'm like, it's pitch black. I'm like, bro. Oh no. You nah, you got to turn those on, homie. <laughs> like, nah, that, that that ain't that ain't fly. Yeah. So. Pun intended. Uh, so then we ended up, you know, landing safely. But it was it was a good experience. Uh, I got to go to Hawaii. That's about the far as I went. But really? I, yes. I didn't really care to go anywhere else. But now I look back and oh, I miss out on all those great times, bro. Because every time I see win, he was like, dude, you should have seen the porn that I seen over there, bro. And the I'm what? Like, the porn. The porn. Okay. <laughs> Instead of telling me it was a dope <laughs> show or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. you should have seen the porn over there. I was young. Like, he gets passed. Yeah, of course. I mean, of course. We're all young. I mean, I... I you know, I've had my share. I'm sure we have, you had your share. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My wife's watching, so we'll just push on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, she knows everything about it, bro. She knows about that. That's dope. That's dope. So now. But uh, the groupies, though. Look at look it up. Look at up. Why are you salivating over there? You got bottles coming in your mouth. <laughs> nah, bro. Come on. You know what it was like? Do the shows. Of course. Go to the hotel. You would scream the hotel on stage. On stage. Right? On stage. And the room number. After party at. So and so, the, the Holiday Inn, whatever. Yeah. Room 200 whatever you know and then as soon as you get there boom everybody's in the lobby of course after the party it's the hotel lobby you know and, after like, that was, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> and i would go to other people's rooms man like right because i didn't want to you know I, don't wanna, I got shit in mind you know my money in there I can't right. trust nobody man. you know one thing i gotta say about you guys and i don't say this about everybody that i've interviewed every time we've done a show with you guys those shows have always been fucking hype, bro. Mm. Like really, really hype. Because I remember a couple of times you guys came out on opposite ends mm. and you guys would just fucking hype up the crowd. The crowd would go fucking crazy. I remember, uh, and I shared this story before, me and High C, the only time we ever gotten booed, and that's a question I want to ask you if you guys have ever gotten booed. We went to Atlanta, we performed, we got booed, mm -hmm. okay? We came back the next day to Sacramento and we performed with you guys and the motherfucker was lit. Right. We blew that motherfucker. But you know what? It was during that time the high C was trying to gain the attention of the black fans. Recognition. Right, right, right. And it wasn't happening. Right. You know, you I think it him, was the oldest song? Of course I, it was. Right. It was. Now keep in mind, when I did that, I just did that for my fucking neighborhood on a mixtape. Sure. I didn't think it was ever gonna end up on the radio. Right. Know? But so after when he saw that it was taken off, he was like, Man, I don't wanna be recognized for that shit. Right. Because he wanted that DJ Quick second to none. Sure, yeah, it's his group. It's his you camp. know. But, oh well. Yeah. You know. He, well, you know, but. I mean, I remember going to Atlanta 
not mm-hmm. getting booed, but they weren't like so much receptive to us, like yeah, or, yeah, you know, like vibing, you know. <laughs> and we were out there because obviously our song was new on the radio. So right. in exchange, you do a promo for radio back right. then, which is a show for free. Um, I'm sure we've been booed before. Uh, I don't think really on the West Coast, but more more so Midwest. Like I remember going to a Chicago show. Mm-hmm. or was it Detroit? Detroit show. Okay. And we show up to Detroit, right? And um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Chicago. And Bobby had a Detroit jacket on is what it was. He had the D for DTX. Okay. Over there. You know, messing with the disciples out there. You know what I'm saying? The Latin Kings. Uh, yeah. So he shows up. He goes, decides to go. And he didn't know. We didn't know. We're like new. We're in Chicago. We hadn't been right. there. And he goes and buy this big, <laughs> this big jacket with a big D on the back. And um, I guess we had got word that the way he wears his hat in Sunday afternoon video, if you watch the Sunday afternoon video, it's like this. Yeah. And he's rapping. Well, this is a this is a gang. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know which one. So we already had that coming when we got there. We oh, were already shit. heard, like, you know what I mean? But it was cool. We we did the show. Nobody really but I re- just remember the the show that we performed at, it was a gang of disciples there. And Bobby's like, I'm not wearing his jacket there, for one. But the ones who got booed were uh, outcast. Really? All the players play, man. When they dropped that yeah. players ball, that album. Yeah. They were just they just came out. That was their debut album. Yeah. And and Chicago booed them. And they even said we're like, yo, man, like, dude, we're just doing our thing, man. Let us get through this. Blah 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 with your ATL boys, blah, 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 whatever. But that was the first time I, I saw anyone really get booed like that. Wow. I remember we did a show, a Halloween show in Sacramento, and then <laughs> this is a funny story, dude. The promoter comes up to us. He goes, hey, man, you know what? Uh, I'm going to let a, uh, we were headlining. I'm going to let a group go on before you guys. They're here. They're kind of new. They ain't that fucking good anyways. But we're going to let them go out there before you guys. So, yeah. Okay. Um, that was Jodeci. Mm. They opened up for us. Like, we didn't know who in the fuck they were. They were just dropping the new single because they were pushing it. And they, they showed up in town and they asked, can we perform? And the promoter, I don't think he even fucking knew who they Brand were. Brand new. Brand new, yeah. Nothing out. No, 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 no nothing out. Just pushing up promotional shit. Right. He was like, yeah, they ain't that fucking good. So we don't let them go on before <laughs> you. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. So we did a couple of shows with them, but we didn't know who they, who in the hell they were at the time. Right. But, yeah. We did a couple of shows at TLC. I'm sure you did a lot of shows. Sure. I remember doing, uh, t- in Texas, shout out to Texas. We were out in Houston, the La Semana affairs they do out there. TLC, OPP, oh, excuse me, TLC, Naughty by Nature. And then us. Mm-hmm. Great show. I remember that. Don't yeah, man, know. a lot of memories, and, and that that's what's great about just uh, being in the game so young, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it really is. You know what? Um, here's what I want to do. We can take a five-minute break and come back, or we can just go on from here. It's up to you. Let's keep it pushing. Okay, let's keep it pushing. I wanted yeah. to ask you a question. Uh, so I'm going to change the channel up a little bit, uh, or change the channel a little bit, and I want to ask you about Bobby, may he rest in peace. Um, when was it that you heard about his passing or him being in the hospital? Mm-hmm. You know, if you can kind of, how, how did you get that phone call or did somebody, you know, message you, text you or? Yeah, I got a, I got a text. Actually, it was a phone call. Um, Bobby's cousin, Richard, was, uh, he's blowing me up and I was in a meeting at, mm-hmm. at, you know, with the radio station. I was, in, and, uh, I was like, man, who's calling me, man? So I'm like, chill, I'm like talking to like you don't want to like get on your phone when you're in, you know you're at work and uh so finally i just i had a look and it was richard calling me blowing me up and he was like oh call me call me man it's important it's important he never i like, hardly ever hear from him you know what i mean yeah um so for this for him to call me it must have been real important so i excused myself from the table and i went over to the restroom i think i got on the phone and uh, i said what's up dude he goes rob he goes he goes, uh, are you sitting down right now, man? I go, nah, man. I go, I'm in the middle, middle of a meeting. What's up, dude? I go, what's, what's wrong? You all right? You good? And he was like, hey, man, Rob. He goes, Bobby passed away, man. Bobby passed away. And then I just remember, I immediately, I was just silent. Like, I was just... Because I, I knew, you know, Bobby had been going through some things for a very, very, very long time. And that's what's crazy is that this world, we see only half, I would say, on what you see on social media. 
and you really don't know a person until you know them or if you know them or you've been around them you know and uh so when he gave me that i, I already knew what it was or i had a hunch yeah and uh i was just i was just uh i i i just needed to know the details now from this point on like where you know what i'm saying that was my question like where um so then i hung up and then uh i remember i got a hold of his mom so i gotta call his mom gotta call his mom so i ended up calling her and um i says hey i says barbara i'm sorry i go um i don't know what to say i just got new you know word from this can you can you please i was in shock I was like can you confirm this she was like yes and i says uh all right i'm gonna book a plane flight for us tomorrow and uh in the morning and then we'll, we'll, we'll go see him in vegas because that's where he passed away so that's what i did you know uh went to the airport and um we ended up missing our flight for some reason i was like oh man this ain't happening and then we ended up catching another one like a couple a couple hours later so we got on the flight and then uh we went to vegas and we got off the plane and we went straight to the hospital and there's where uh we went to you know his, there's where he was in his hospital bed yeah yeah okay and and what was it that the doctors uh when you know you guys spoke to them like what was it that he passed away of or um you know any details i know you said you wanted to know details uh if you could if you could speak on some of them you know, um, what was it that the doctor said happened to him? I didn't speak. Well, the doctor was uh, through the nurses, whatnot. When I, because when I got there, he was already laid up. Uh, uh, I think some of his aunts were there already. There was just a few of us in there. His mother, uh, I think his brother was there, Pete, and um, his wife or his ex were that was there as well. And what they had said was he had he had been there already for like a good. I think uh, like a good week yeah so they basically he he was uh because he didn't have any identification on him right so it was basically a john doe they were tagging him as that right. when they found him um so yeah so he was basically hooked up to a ventilator okay yeah right. and and um um after did they have the services out here or was it in vegas or yeah it was out here it, well it was in corcoran okay and that, that's where uh corcoran hanford area that's where uh i'm sorry hanford yeah hanford um that's where bobby was you know born and okay. that's where they where he grew up out that way and uh so they ended up having the services there and, and transferred you know over there and it was nice man i mean for the most part yeah yeah. What, 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 was he out there living in Vegas at the time or was he just out there visiting or? He, uh, we had did our last show in Fresno. Okay. And we did a show in Fresno and it was a car show. And I remember he was going to drive down. He had okay. his girlfriend with the t at the time. Okay. And, and their daughter. And um, we had talked about, I told him, hey man, after this, you know, because I was always trying to get him to let lift the spirits and get them to come by the crib you know right. come hang with my family you know what i mean and I always just be in a good environment right you know what i'm saying yeah uh so the agreement was i'm gonna fly back fly, fly home mm -hmm. and then you know i guess he was gonna go take a trip to the beach okay you know what i mean uh and then he says on my way back he goes we're supposed to go to vegas he goes i'll stop by your house okay cool man we'll chop it up you know what i mean we'll watch the game We'll, uh, we'll barbecue, just come by the pad, that way, you know, you can meet my son and, and uh, my daughter and my family. And um, so he, I never got that call. He ended up going straight to Vegas. And uh, so I was like, ah, oh, you know, typical Bobby. Like, you know, <laughs> he ain't gonna call, like, like he's like hit or miss, you know what I mean? So I was like, whatever, he's with his family, he's good. So, there's where he ended up going to vegas and um everything else is just hearsay from that point because I, I i don't know both sides but um i do know that 
you know, they were at a hotel and, um, you know, he was with his family and I, I think they may have got to get into an argument. Uh, and I think from what I hear that she ended up, you know, the girl, his girlfriend ended up going somewhere else, if not going home. Okay. That's what I heard. He ended up staying in Vegas. Um, uh, yeah, man, it just kind of, you know, it was just, that, there's where it ended, man. Yeah. That, that's okay. all I can say, man. I don't want to say too much. No, I understand. I understand. Uh, and uh, first of all, I want to thank you for sharing that because I think uh, people had, you know, we, we interviewed Shiro here and I want to thank her for coming here. Um, you know, I've been wanting to get you here for the longest. I'm thankful you came here and I think people wanted to hear your side of it or at least what you heard. You know, if right. that, so and I just want to, if I can say something clear the air. Yes. And I don't normally address the negative because I focus on positive and that's what we should focus on at all times. But, uh, you know, people were, I will say this, and this will come out at a later time, you know, hopefully sooner than later, you'll hear this story. But I mean, the relationship we shared mm -hmm. was a relationship like a marriage, okay? We've been through a lot. Mm -hmm. Very key, very important thing here is we were put together. You know, those groups that are put together, EPMD, you know, put together. Sugar Hill. Together Bay, and that's assembled by somebody with a vision. So we already, we kind of grew up in the same, you know, neighborhood or kind of, well, he was on the other side, whatnot, but we didn't grow up together. So we were bonded together. So we had to learn each other. You know what I mean? It wasn't like homies, like, hey, man, fool, come on, man, we're going to make it, you know, out the hood, both of us, you and me, boom. It wasn't like that. So I wasn't there part of his upbringing. He wasn't there for mine. Right. Okay? So I do know that he did have some mental uh, issues going on or, you know, um, just with his past. Yeah. Everybody does. You get older, you start thinking about the past. Some of us, you know, we go there. Like, we all, we all got those trials. You know, and, and we think back on, on our childhood. Um, but I think it affected him the more and more he got older. Yeah. Okay? So, um, we did great in, in the studio. We did great on stage. Our chemistry, like you said it yeah. earlier, dude, it was unreal. Like, boom. We could leave, not perform for a few years, five years, come right back on stage, and exactly what we did 10 years later and pick up where we left off, just like homies do, you know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, But I think people get the misconception that that we were brothers. We were brothers to the sense to where, yeah, like, we made music together. Yeah. But we would do our music, and we'd come home, and we'd go our separate ways. And I'll just leave it at that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm getting... Oh, that's your hermano, bro. You guys, your best friend, or that's your diehard, and blah blah blah. And and as far as you know, now that he's gone, as far as continuing on with the legacy, yes, which is his legacy as well, which is my job to promote his legacy, which I do all. That. If you follow us on social media, you'll see that. Yes. Okay. And trust me. Like, even to this day, like, I'm dropping new music right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm having a tough decision to go under as ODM. Not even Lighter Shade of Brown. ODM, Lighter Shade ODM. Or as Lighter Shade of Brown. Because I'm one half. Right. Because my partner, rest in peace, is not here to perform or record. So that's the dilemma I'm having right now. Because if I do, then I don't want to hear all that bullshit. Right. But at the same token, my people that are close to me, they're like, dude, I think that's what Bobby would want. He wouldn't have it any other way. Because if that was him, I'm sh he would be in the studio. Yeah. He was making records when we weren't, when, there was a point when we went on hiatus. I got in the radio in 2000. From that point on up until 2015, Bobby was still doing music. You know what I'm saying? We had another outlet. He chose not to go. Yeah. He wanted to do the music thing. I says, well, we have an opportunity to, to be on radio. 
get multiple stations and then work our music that way. Come on. That's my foot in the door for us. Yeah. So that didn't work out. So what did he do? He, my, my man had to survive. He had to, he had to perform. He had to do shows. He was, I heard he, all kinds of heads were going on stage with him. They were acting like they were ODM. <laughs> rapping ODM's lyrics. And I heard him. I heard all about him. Whatever. I didn't care. I did, but I didn't. Because I wanted him. That's how he got his bread. Yeah. So I left him alone. I could have called him up. Hey, man, I, I need my, my cut for this. Because I see a lot of shade of brown here on this flyer. Or I see you here in Texas. Or I see you in here. But I didn't. I let homie get his bread. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it was my choice to go do the radio thing. Yes. Um, so here we go. We circle back in 2015. And and it was like, it was crazy, man. Because him and I, when we when we start talking again, it's like it's like nothing. It's like we sweep it under the rug. Right. You know, and it's like, hey, man, what's up? Hey, hey, check this out, man. Uh, you know, we have an opportunity to to do an album, whatever. Because see, a lot, lot of things we didn't touch upon was there was a point where in 94, which was our last album together at that time, we, we split. Yeah. I started doing records, producing. I produced Hey DJ on that last album. I did like Dipping In My Ride. I did like all these other singles, If You Want to Groove, like a lot on those singles right there. And I started getting more into production. Then I broke off. We had a fallout. There's where I started meeting Slow Pain in the world. Rest in peace. I produced Slow Pain's first album. A lot of y'all didn't know that. Look on the credits. You hear me on his album. The, um, the ones where he's holding the two butt cheeks, the yeah. baby OG. That was done by me and the homie Carlo. Okay. Then I started branching out. I got my own studio. And uh, the bachelor's pad. Y'all know about the Brown Royal Kingpins, man. I came out with that. And I remember Mr. Capone coming out. Knocked on my door. Capone. Oh, what's up, ODM? Hey. Hey, what's up, homie? Hey, man. Uh, remember Capone telling me, man, I want, I want you to produce my record, man. You know, um, you know, I, I just, I don't want to, you know, because he was getting in trouble. He goes, I don't want to do that no more, homie. I want to do something good with my money. I want to do something positive, you know, yeah. whatever. I said, come on in, bro. Let's go. Let's work. Anybody wanted to come in my studio, I let them work. Okay. I was, I still, I would do shows here or there with Bobby. And, um, but I was mainly producing. And then, you know, Shadows of the World, um, N2D, ALT, Frost, Baby Beach, who was Baby Beach then, not Baby Bass. They would all slide through my studio. You know what I mean? And I was just sitting there cooking, man, making, making tracks, making beats. And, um, put out my own complication. My complica it was a complication because I put out <laughs> my compilation because I had no distribution. Because all I did was produce, but that's another, you know, story. So I hit up the, you know, Norwalk Records all day, and they buy a case here. The homies come down with a swami who's selling the CDs. But I just wanted to work. I found a passion. Like, you you have yeah. a passion for this. Yeah. That's what my passion was. So here comes DWTX two years later from, from that gap, 94 to uh, 98. We put out another album. Um, and, uh, we two albums under Greenside Records, and that's the one where Sunny Days on, and uh, the one we did with uh, Whatever You Want, with Tony Tony Tony, and great albums, man. I produced yeah. the whole thing. Uh, if you can see inside me, Bobby was back, and we were back together. We were making music, man. It was on and cracking, and then two years later, that's where we just kind of did our thing, man. I I, I think we just kind of outgrew it. I don't know. I, I saw an outlet, like I said, radio. Um, and there's where we had we had parted ways for another, what? Yeah. I mean, 16 years or something like that. Yeah. And I remember you, you actually produced a song, uh, uh, Girls That Ain't Easy for uh, Mi Vida Loca. Right. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Four Corners. Shout out to Letty and the girls. Yeah. And then, uh, so now, uh, so that people could understand um, your guys' relationship, you guys are still doing shows, right? We started doing shows, yeah, like I said, here or there, bits and pieces, I remember. Uh -huh. um, but I was already back into radio, I was doing my thing. So I think, like I said, the point, the, there was a point from like maybe uh, 04, um, 03, 04 to like 2015. And I would hear shows that he would he'd be here or there or whatnot. And people would hit me up, hey, you gonna be there? You gonna be there? 
oh man, it was like this big thing to get us back together. Because you don't want to see your childhood group right. split. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and then finally 2015 came, and this is where we met up at that Art LeBeau show, man. And um, we just kind of, you know, we hugged it out, and we were like, let's work, man. Come yeah. on, let's, let's get these shows. You know, let's give them, let's give them what they want to pay to see. Right. And we did. We ended up killing that. Their video is actually on YouTube, man. Check, so check it out. Now you said uh, um, you about twenty years ago you started radio. Right. Okay. And you've been there ever since. Um, yeah, I got I started radio in two thousand. So I just hit twenty years last year. Yeah, wow! Congratulations, years. brother. Thank you. And thirty years, uh, brown and proud this year coming brown. up in November. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, man. That's awesome. So, you know what? How do you enjoy being on the air, man, as far as being a DJ on the air? <sighs> man, it just like <laughs> off top, I love it. I love okay. being on stage. I love being behind the mic in the studio. You know what I mean? I love talking to people. I love putting smiles on people's faces, like if, if they're listening to me. Because yeah. somebody, you don't know what they're going through. Right. You know, so if I can joke, I'm that now I'm considered a dad joker. I got dad jokes because I'm older now. <laughs> But whatever, I still think I'm the cool kid in the room with those dad jokes. Well, at least yeah. my kids do. <laughs> uh, but um, nah, dude, like, I, I loved it. I, I love being a part of it. It was another spectrum of my life that I, you know, that I could say, hey, man, I did 20 years of that. I'm still doing it. Inland Empire, shout out to 991 KCGI, I heard media. And, um, but it's all under the same umbrella. I, I got an idea what it was like to be on the other side of the chair right. as an artist. And now I get it. Because artists would come to me throughout the years. Hey, homie, oh, you're not playing my F this fool, man. ODM, he got no lame. Back up, blah, 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 blah. And I just go, yo, like, nah, man. You can't, you don't even understand this side. I understand it because I was that dude. I was like you. I used to go to, to, to Julio G at the beat, man. Hey, man, dude, we got a new album, Julio. All right, man, send it to me. And never get played. But because you didn't hear it, you think, because that's what we were used to. Lighter Shade of Brown, they got a name, and then you just you just get the the, the the song and dance, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I can't play it. I get it now. It's politics. That's what I don't like about it. it but as far as the, uh, the being the talent on air, bro, I love it. I love it. You know, just everything about it. You know it. what? I interviewed the Baker Boys here, and I and I asked them, you ever get any knuckleheads? Hey, man, when the fuck you don't play my fucking record? How come you? And they were like, you don't understand. And I, I remember one time, I forgot where I was. I think it was in Downey. Yeah. Um, I want to say, I think Acapulco's right there on Firestone. Okay. Down at Karaoke Bar. Everybody used to go there at Baker Bush at one time. Yeah. They were there maybe 20 minutes. Everybody, hey, man, how come you don't play my shit? Hey, man, how come you don't? They fucking laugh, bro. To the Baker Boys. Yeah, to the Baker Boys. And I talked to them off, off air. Yeah. And I asked them, and they were like, dude, we used to get fucking death threats. Like, shit oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Like, dude, I'm barely starting to see that now being a podcaster. Right. You know, hey, man, how can you give my fucking interview? How come I'm an interview? Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to say you, you, you could eventually get to people, get to some, but you got to, like, like I can tell people, artists, especially upcoming artists, like it's not my job to make you a star. <laughs> it's your job. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and by me throwing on your record once or twice, what's that going to do for you? What's it going to do for us? Besides satisfaction. Right. But if that's what it is, then get in line. Because there's a million other motherfuckers that want to be there. Now, yeah, I get that. Oh, you were there too. You knew what it was like. You know, well, you got your break. Yeah. But I also remember being in the vans, hot as hell. <laughs> you know, 15 passenger vans with 20 of us going across the country, hustling. Yeah. I also remember having a backpack of CDs, cruising Hollywood Boulevard, passing them out on the freaking like, strip. You know what I mean? And right. everybody bumping our album. You know, I, I remember stuff like that. Pain the flyer days, passing that stuff. There was no being she. Oh, I'm gonna send you an MP3 and you download it. Bullshit. You show up in person. You hand somebody your CD. Say, hey, thank you. I'd like to check out my stuff. That's why the cats on the streets with the Walkmans. I don't know if they still are on the streets. Boom. They they be bumping their shit, hustling their shit. I'll listen to their shit before I will an MP3. Yeah. I'm sorry because to me, and it's presentation. It's how you approach somebody. Yeah, I mean, yeah, come on, man. That should just come from day one. You know what's funny is <laughs> Mac-10 <laughs> came in. I'll tell you a story to the radio station. And he had that testimony song out, uh -huh. that church song. And uh, he comes in. The back door was open to the radio station. You know what I mean? Like, here comes Mac-10. I'm on the air. And I'm like, yo, what's up? 991 KGI. I look over. Here comes Mac-10. He has his meme, like, meme mugging, bro. I'm like, oh, shit. On KGI. 
So I go, I go, what's up, Mac? Like, you know, and he shook my hand. He was like, hey, homie, where Jesse the brand at? I was the PD, program director. And I go, um, he's not here, dude. What's up? Can I help you with something, man? Like, what's going on, homie? You know, sit in my chair. Like, I was inviting him in, like, right, right. Man, like, come sit down. He was like, hey, man, I want to know what's up with my spins. How come y'all ain't pushing my shit, man? Blah, blah, blah. Like, like hitting, like, attacking me. Right, right. So I was like, well, look. If I was PD, I would. <laughs> I said, but I'm not, that's not me, bro. It's already here for right. me in front of my face. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it was interesting because people, you know, they get upset and I get it. But I like the streets will talk. Bottom yeah. line, the streets will talk on anything. Let me tell you something. The best promotion is word of mouth. Yes. Word of mouth. When yes. you piss somebody off, that shit spreads like wildfire. You come out with a good jam. Yeah, all right. A few of your homies will download it. But when you piss somebody off, I'm telling you, that travels faster. Bad news travels faster than good. That's why I'm saying, like, just be respectful, man. If you come up to me, hey, ODM, what's up, bro? Hey, I listen to you. I heard you on radio. Or, you know, I hear you. Or, you know, I, I heard my homie told me. I just want to slide you this, whatever. I'm not, nine times, ten times out of ten, I'm going to grab it and, and I'm going to play it. Yeah. I'll listen to it. That's dope, man. That's dope. Now, you know what? We're going to go ahead and promote your new song. Yeah. And you got a new video out. Yes. Uh, and whatever you want to promote. Ooh. You blessed me with a dope-ass shirt, which I'm going to sport. Uh-huh. And this dope-ass hat, which I'm going to sport. Like yes, sir. You, you, you will see me in a sporting this hat. I appreciate it. So, go ahead, bro. Promote your new song, whatever you want. Are we going to get into it? Yes. All right. So, look. Back in the studio and vibing heavy right now. I would tell you, this Beachy Pandemic. It affected one of us. Whether you lost weight, you gained weight, you know what I'm saying? You lost, you lost some jobs. We lost jobs as artists. We lost shows. Remember that. So if that wasn't an incentive to get my ass back in the studio, call it a calling. Call it what you want. Oh, yeah, you're just back in there. Because, yeah, you're right. Because I got to feed my family. Which brings me, leads, leads me to, um, I'm, a, I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a father of three children. Um, and my beautiful wife, Vanessa. And I'm a family man. It was long. took me forever, bro. But we started a YouTube channel. It's called the RVG Fam. Shout out to everybody, the fam bam out there. You guys been following. We've been doing it for three years now. Oh. Doing, you know, doing great. Um, wish we were moving on a little bit more. But, hey, you know what? I'll take what we got. You know what I'm saying? Because we do it because we love it. And that's something you always want to do anything in life, man. If you love doing it, hey, man, you won't work a day in your life. Cliche, but it's true. Yeah. You love it. This song right here in particular we're about to get into um we my wife and i we had a couple of uh rough pregnancies mm -hmm. okay 2017 2018 um the end of 2018 we got she got pregnant again third time so we had went to um and is he gonna play the video of the song you know what i'm not even sure if he downloaded it john okay don't even worry about it okay you can you can download it on my side <laughs> um long story short we went the third time okay and we had a misdiagnosis okay the doctor said that uh she did ultrasound my wife and that she said this isn't a normal pregnancy i don't see a baby there and i said what how, how was that wow. we, just two weeks ago we went to an er because my wife was had, had had pains and um there was a baby you know they, they came out yeah we had a heartbeat everything baby's breathing you know this many weeks cool and then we go to our very first official doctor visit and she said there's nothing there so we're just looking at each other like crushed, right? And I'm like, man, again, It'll be the third time. So the doctor says, hey, you're going to go to a, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, she says. And uh, either we could do a DNC or we can give you pills and you can go flush it out. You know, it'll be over, like an overnight type pill. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So my wife was like, just, just get the pills. Like, I don't want to go through this again. I don't want this thing. I don't want it in me. Whatever it is, you know, dead or whatever. Right. That's what we're thinking, the worst. So I go down to the pharmacy on a Friday to go pick up the pills. The pharmacist is there and is on their computer. I says, hey, I'm here to pick up the pills for my wife. And he goes, uh, I'm sorry, sir. He goes, I can't give you the pill. There's a typo in the doctor's email, okay? Uh -huh. And I was like, what do you mean? I go, come on, dude. I go, my wife knows I had her on the phone. She's like, dude, just tell him to give you the pills. Like, we've been this route before. And he goes, sorry. He goes, I, I, I can't. You're gonna have to come back on Monday. When, when I get things cleared with the doctor because I, I can't release these for whatever reason. So Saturday we wake up, boom, it's the weekend. We're laying there in bed and I'm going, 
something don't sound right. Something don't seem right. I just got this like weird feel. I go, you know what? Can we? Does your sister still work at sister in law still work at that spot over there? Your sister in law's um, sister. Another ultrasound place. So we go get a second ultrasound, a second opinion on on Sunday. And here we're sitting there, bro. And they grab the wand because before it was through vaginal. This here they put the wand right on her stomach and pow, a screen like that. There's a baby, full on baby, kicking, heartbeat. You see it? I jump up. And I said, shit, if that ain't God's doing, man, if that pharmacist just gave me those pills and my wife took those pills, we wouldn't be in this situation today as we are seeing this baby on this screen. And there's where, like, bro, like God was like, here, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've been through enough already. You, I, I got you. Don't worry, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these blocks up. We're gonna block this. We're gonna block that. And come Sunday, I'm gonna let you see. Or Monday, I'm gonna let you see. And sure enough, bro, we were pregnant, man. And and uh, so this song right here is dedicated to my newborn miracle, which is called Newborn Miracle, or Maya Rain. And I wrote this song for her and everybody else who has gone through this similar situation. It's, it's emotional, bro, because if you've gone through it. You know what I'm talking about. If you've lost someone, if you lost a child, uh, you know, if you've gone through, and we didn't know about this, and it was our subscribers on our YouTube channel um, that that told us, hey, go get a second opinion. Right. I would have never known. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, I I wouldn't, but that was in the back of my head. Yeah. Like, we, we did, my, 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 my sister's been through two or three of them or four of them, like, you know, lifting our spirits right. up. So I owe it to them too. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, the RVG fam, that's on YouTube. This is Newborn Miracle. And I want to give love to uh, Coda. Shout out to my boy Coda um, for being on this hook and produced by Ace Beats. And yeah, dude, it's it's a long song. People are like, but I had a story to tell. So. You know, if my boy, for some reason, didn't download yeah. it. Uh, they could see it at RGV. Yeah, you can go to the RVG, RVG, Robert Vanessa Gutierrez. That's our YouTube channel. And it's the first video as soon as you go. We have it as our trailer. Definitely check it out and subscribe to his page. Okay. Yes. And follow them. So at this time, uh, Rob, ODM, my friend, any shout outs you want to give uh, before I, you know, tell you how much it's been a pleasure. Oh, man. Here, man. First shout out, big, big ups to you, brother, for having me here on this platform. You're doing great things. And it's it's I'm happy to see that you're opening up a platform for up and coming artists and you know also sharing some light what bringing some of us old dudes in too you know what i mean because <laughs> hey we're kind of like the big brothers in this game right yes yeah. and uh i think we owe it to 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 our uh, up and coming rappers and artists and whoever just youth you know and um and i want to um thank all the fans all of you out there who who have been with us since day one some writers man i'm telling you 30 years coming up in november brown and proud this has been a crazy journey, crazy movement, and I'm glad that we're still doing it. The legacy lives on. DWTX, he will always live on, and so will our music. And that's why I said it's timeless music, because forever, even when I'm gone, Sunday afternoon, man, Art LeBeau's Sunday theme song. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. So I want to thank the fans for keeping us there and passing the music down. And uh, look out for new music. I'm dropping it. Newborn Miracles, just a little taste. And just to give you a little thing, I got uh, I actually got some un unreleased music with Bobby Dope. that I'm dropping. Dope. So, Dope. so RVG family. RVG family is our family YouTube, and then yes. of course LSOB 1990, which you already have. Yes. Lighter shade. Of Definitely Bobby. go check out that video. Um, ODM, thank you very much for being here, brother. I, there's so much history that we could that we can just <laughs> keep going. Bro. Right, right, right. We right, can right. keep going. But you know what? I just want to, once again, thank you. It's truly really been an honor and a pleasure to have you here in front of me and to chop it up. And thank God we're still here, brother. And yes. thank God for your family and for your, you know, your new baby. Thank you, brother. Thank so, you. Bless you. Um, at this time, so uh, let me go ahead and give a shout out to my boy, John motherfucking Elkins, for making this possible. Got to always thank John motherfucking Elkins, okay? So, uh, Do you always so say his name like that? Just like that. John motherfucking Elkins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> com coming. So, and I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out to my boy, Alex Cervantes. And brother, what's your name over there? Danny Boy. Danny Boy. Money Moons. Money Moons. Get in, Moon. Come here. Mr. Mickey. Real quick. What, what was that? Mr. Mickey. Oh. Mr. Mickey. Not Mickey's the 40, but... No, Mr. Mickey. Mickey. He's a chef. 
Okay, he's a mid. Oh, when Disneyland oh. opens up back again, you'll probably see, okay. you can probably see him rolling and, around. Uh, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl, Blanca Bobby D presents. Much love. Hey, okay, real quick. Yes. I know you got to go. I'm gonna shout out artist Money Moons. We got a single drop in um, when, this Friday, right? No, no, no. Probably in a couple weeks. I'm gonna oh, drop it. No, 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 Okay, everybody. Uh, once again, Friday, Freaky Tales. Make sure you subscribe to Freaky Tales Podcast uh, on YouTube, or you can follow us on Freaky Tales Podcast on IG for future content. And ODM, thank you very much. Um, brother, God bless you and your family. So, thank you, bro. Thank you, brother. Tony A., so, the man. Bobby, rest in peace, brother. And we're out of here. We'll see you guys later.